And yeah, we're going. Okay, hey guys, so welcome to Hi Carly. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings. Okay, so basically we were left off last time by um, seeing if our printf worked properly. So we had uh, percentage d percentage c percentage x in our um, in our format string in this case. By the way, for anybody who's new and has any questions, just please ask them because I, like I I, I applied this in a bunch of other groups and um, yeah, for the people who are new. It might be a, a lot of information. So basically, I'm just going to finish this, and then I'm going to just give a quick overview of how everything works on my computer. But yeah, for now, I'm going to move, uh, move uh, like the address of the formal string into the first parameter. Then I'm going to move like a few numbers, like uh, one two uh, zero x one two three four and zero x uh, five six seven eight into the next two, um, the next two. What are they called? Registers. So it is EDI, ESI, EDX, uh, ECX. Those are the order of uh, the calling convention. Uh, and then I'll do this to like, uh, what was it? We have a decimal number, a char and a hexadecimal number. So I will actually change this one to uh, zero, zero FF because I know for a fact that that number is 255. Why is this a... Can a... What? Can a byte not Wait. be... Zero X and does it show? Oh! Hmm. Okay, now we're, we're running into another issue. That's interesting. That's interesting. It is trying to... Represent it in sign and magnitude, I think. Or in another... Format that is not unsigned. What? Uh, what if I just say convert this to a byte? Hey, now it's working, boys. <laughs> I think for I think for any number that is not a that's not like below, I think 128, it will give issues. I will look into this later. I'll I'll I'm busy. I'll, I'll finish this first. So I've got the number 255 in there. I've got the number. Uh, let's change this into a character, so I know the fa for a fact the character 41 is actually a uh, a capital A. And then we have a percentage X, which is uh, a hexadecimal number, so I'll just change that to uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I think that should work. We're going to see. Hmm? Oh, yeah, um... Another thing that we definitely should not forget. <laughs> Calling step a bunch of times. Because if we don't do that, it's not going to execute the check. Okay. Uh, Alright, this is something. Execution in thread main uh, character isn't along. In uh, CPU 172. Character isn't along. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so right now we're converting. The, the, let's see, the D and the C should work. So if I change this to a D, it should work. Uh, but I'm sure it has at least... Add a space here, and then a space here. I'm sorry for everybody watching the YouTube video. It's like almost like, -dun 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 -dun. hey, there we go, there we go. Oh, this is sick. Okay, so for the first one, we have. Oh, oh, that might be something. We're printing it as a, uh, as a percentage D, which is a signed long. So how do we print an unsigned number? Well, anyways, if if I just change this to like zero x ten, it's gonna just print sixteen. But that just that that means our printf works, but the other thing doesn't. Yeah, there we go. And then we have zero uh, x d, which is also just yeah. Okay. Okay, that's cool. So we know our printf works now, or at least. Um, 
for non-string values. That's sick. Okay, for everybody who's new here and who uh, hasn't seen my computer yet, uh, I'm gonna go over the, the um, I'm gonna go over how it works real quick. So the base of the computer is I have a CPU class, uh, which contains a, a byte array of memory and a byte array of registers, which are in initialized here. The memory is just like kind of like the RAM in a in a normal computer. That's literally what it is, and the registers is just a, a list of seven longs where we um where every long is a register so we have like eax ebx ecx edi uh, edx edi uh, edi esi and eip there's gonna be more to come but we'll see about that later uh there's some other auxiliary auxiliary functions uh, that i use inside of the instructions like fetch 32 which, which will get a a 32 byte or 32 bit uh value inside uh, that's currently pointed to by the instruction pointer it will make a lot more sense why i do this when we get there then there's also a fetch 32 add so i can say like okay get me four bytes from this address and it will just return that properly um same for all the other values we uh, we, we can write stuff at certain uh, points in memory that's also real useful and then um we have step and what step does is it gets an instruction and all these fetch instructions also increase uh, increment the instruction pointer. So it gets an instruction. It checks if that instruction is equal to, uh, for example, instructions move lit to mem. And that's all just defined here. These are all just hexadecimal numbers. And um, it checks, okay, is that it? If so, give me a 32-bit uh, value. Give me a 16-bit value. And I'll write the 32-bit value at the location of the 16-bit value. And so, for example, here uh, would be, we uh, say, okay, we move a uh, move lit reg, so that will actually put a 0x10 in there. And then we have a literal, which is 0x0000, zero, 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 uh, 2000. Zero, zero, zero. And then we'll have the registers, and that's also just uh, a little, little list here, where uh, it'll just say, okay, EDI, that is, uh, I don't know, 4. Um... And then in that way we can just write our own CPU code or a byte code into the directly into this computer's memory and then execute it. And we execute it by just calling step repeatedly. I'll make I'll make a function for that. But yeah, what we're doing now is we're trying to test out the call printf instruction. And uh, that basically just calls printf with the instructions in uh, with the arguments in our our d uh, our di our si our dx our cx. And that's it. So that works as of now. Um, I am curious though if I go here and I'll go to uh, Java string format unsigned uh, in teacher for example. Hmm. This is interesting. This is something I'm gonna have to uh, look into because if I put two five five here, it'll print minus one. Or oh, zero x two five five zero x ff. It will print negative one. Which, if we open up a notepad, we will see that it actually makes sense because. Uh, let's see, 0 xff equals to 0 b 11111111 Let me alert this real quick. And uh, let's see. In sign and magnitude, this would be negative 127. In one's complement, this would be 0 x negative 0. Because all of these would be flipped, and this would actually be the value zero, and in one's complement this would be negative one. Okay, uh, two's complement would be negative negative one. So we know it's it's representing it in uh, two's complement instead of um, instead of what's it called? Uh, yeah, just just the unsigned value. Um, which I'm hmm, I'm not sure if I'm really happy about that. 
I guess that happens during the conversion of uh, byte to integer or to uh, to long because I guess if I use the print memory or uh, if I, for example say my CPU dot print uh, my CPU dot registers and then we have CPU uh, registers dot uh, I loaded this into ESI to register dot ESI dot s out this should hypothetically just print um, Oh, that also prints minus one. Then it then that means that during the conversion from long to okay, so let's see. It happens during the instruction move literag. So let's look at that. <coughs> um, so here the long lit is uh, is done with fetch thirty two. Hmm. Uh, in the, during the fetch 32, what do we do? But would that mean that if I put a 1 in here and a 255 in here, that would... I think because we're doing byte here, we convert the memory from this address to a byte and then do long calculation with that. It doesn't like that. So let's see. Java unsigned byte. Uh, what do you mean Java doesn't have unsigned byte? Oh my god, that's annoying. Okay, so... <laughs> Um, we can cast the byte into an int and mask new int with 2ff. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Hmm, this, this makes it a lot harder, guys. <laughs> It means anytime we convert anything from a byte to an int, uh, we have to do that. So I'm gonna make a, a little function called public uh, int b to e, which is byte to int, which takes a byte in byte, and then we say return. Um, an integer from that value, so we convert this uh, in byte to an integer uh, and then and mark that with 0xff Gonna say that I have errors here. Method B to I is never used. So now that means that if I use fetch32 add, I can do B to I. Now what's wrong about this? Hmm. Oh, that's because memory. Wait, no, memory should return a byte. Oh, yeah. Then I have yeah, to cast that to oh, a byte. Right. Wait. Hmm. Then I have to cast it again, and then we'll revert what I just did. Yeah. So, I have to do it here. There we go. I think this should theoretically fix it. Because we're only doing the calculations with the bytes here. Uh, am I going too fast anywhere? Like, do you guys understand what I'm doing? 
for the fact is. Yeah, I mean, mostly. <laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, and then I convert this. Well, no, that, then that's not needed because then we convert mask and then reconvert, which doesn't do anything. Um. And let's see, the reason that works is if we have this byte and we turn that to an integer, it will become 0b1000000. Then the, uh, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The end mask will turn it into this. Oh, that still doesn't. Mm. Okay, I don't really know <laughs> why it works, but I'll just I'll just take it. I'll take the W. Um, is there anywhere else where I'm using it to? Uh, uh, doing mult uh, like, hmm. no, I think the rest just uses that cloth. Oh, that's really nice. Okay, so I think. I think that's that's done now. That means that we won't have this issue later. I'm really glad we stumped into this like earlier than later, because this might have been a uh, a real skull breaker. <laughs> um. Okay, so we've got our printf working. I mm, should we be able to get it working with strings? I think so. I think that wouldn't be too bad. No, actually it would be because we don't know which one of the arguments is supposed to be a string. And well, we could check that, but that would be a lot of work that I don't necessarily feel like doing. So if you if you want to print that with a string format, that's tough luck. And hmm. Yeah, I guess for like I wanted to say the same thing for uh for if you want to print a character, but we can actually quite easily do that by just doing uh, put char, and then you just got to work with the fact that you don't, you cannot call uh, print the character in between that, but just got to make your own put char, which is annoying but not too bad. So if I here say call put char, also for the people who don't know put char, let me actually put out the wiki page. See put char. Um, it writes a, uh, let's see, yeah, writes a character, uh, unsigned char character to the standard output. So that's exactly what we want here. So if we call put char, we only have R RDI as input, so, or in this case EDI. So that means I can take this. Um, I can actually say, uh, char, char byte equals to costing this to a char. Um, let's see, does this work? Well, we're gonna regardless only want to be taking the last, like, the last byte from this. So to get this started. Um, I actually want to convert, hmm. I'm not sure if this allows you to do this, maybe it already does this implicitly, but I'm sure IntelliJ will tell me if, it, if that's the case, but I'm just going to mask it by 0xff. Switch label is unreachable. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. Why is that unreachable? Um... Oh, uh, char byte. Why are these all reachable, but this one not? Duplic- Oh! Oh, wow. Wait, no. I thought maybe- Oh, yeah, they do. Okay. Uh, that was a roller coaster. Okay. So now, it shouldn't be unreachable anymore. Oh, wow, that's really cool that it actually detected that as well. And, uh, 
Uh, give me a sec. Uh, okay. So now we have put char, and that would mean that if... So we know D, uh, the printf function works now. So if I now, instead of that, do move lit to reg, and it will be the uh, oh, character 0x41. And then I take uh, into register.edi and call put char instead. It should only print a capital H. Or a capital A. So now instead of everything down here, which uh, A, and then it's printing the context of ESI, which is logical because uh, which is a zero, but that makes sense. Okay, that's nice. So we now got printf working. We got butcher working. Uh, let's see, what, what can we do next? We can do exit or scanf. Let's do exit. Exit is real easy. Let me follow where uh, the way I put it, so I'll make some room here for the printf, but let's call this one exit. And calling exit uh, just says uh, running is false. And here uh, running is red because we don't have that yet. So now I'm going to set up the logic for the CPU to actually run on its own. So the CPU currently has uh, only two flags. I'm going to turn that to three. So I'm going to also add here a public uh, boolean running. And that is currently false. But then when we call uh, the function run, that should be behind here. Oh no, behind here. Uh, public void run. Let's just say uh, running is true, and then while running, uh, step. So that means it will keep on stepping until it finds the call exit function. Or you manually, uh, for some way, uh, on from the outside turn exit, uh, turn running to fall. But I don't think that's possible while it's busy with this. So that would mean that now... After anything we do, or after our program is done, we have to do my CPU dot memory i plus plus equals to instructions uh, dot call exit. So now instead of doing all these weird ass steps, we can just say computer dot run, and that should just run the computer. Process finished. Oh, yeah, um, it helps if I actually execute the butcher, because I didn't. Okay, um, now this might not be the final way how I'm going to do it, because I'm thinking of also using uh, a built-in screen, or like the uh, memory mapped I.O. for a screen. Because just having access to printf is... Uh, it's fun, but it's not as much of a challenge. Uh, let's see... What are we going to do next? We can take scanf... Uh, uh, the thing with scanf is that... For scanner, we're probably just going to use a reader to system.in. So if we Google Java scanner um, system.in. Here we go. Um, we cannot close this scanner then. So I'm... Um, hmm. I'm not sure what to do here. Um, I'm not genuinely just like skip this one for now and try working on some other stuff. I'll think I'll, I'll think a bit more about how I'm gonna do this. If any of you guys have an idea about how we can do that, let me know. Uh, okay, so 
I am actually thinking of working on conditionals and uh, function <laughs> like how do you say that? Yeah, just jumping, comparing stuff. So let's see what what kind of stuff do we need for that? So let me add a column called uh, conditionals. Static public byte. So we've got a jump, and that is 0x uh, 40. And let me copy this a bunch. So we have jump, we have jump equal, we have jump not equal, we have jump greater than or equal, we have jump greater than, we have jump less than, or uh, yeah, jump less than or equal, jump less than. And I'm only working with uh, signed stuff, or unsigned stuff at the moment. I don't want any unsigned uh, comparisons or unsigned anything like that. Um, okay, so... I think these should be all we need. As in, like, all of the instructions that we need. So now we have two choices. We can do it the way that the... Uh, Oh, actually, this is not yet everything. Because jump is obviously done. Jump is just jump, uh, jump to a. Oh. I am tempted to say jump can only be jumped to a r literal. However, what if you want to jump to a memory location or to a to a, the, uh, the content of a register? So instead of saying, for example, uh, in assembly, uh, let me let me just get this real quick. Jump uh, uh, end. You could do move the value of end to RDI and then jump uh, to RDI. Do you guys know if this is possible in in assembly? Uh, yeah, it was it was possible, but you needed a, an asterisk prefix for that. I used that in my brainfuck code. Mm. So it is possible. You can you can implement it in Java, of course, I believe. Yeah, that's fair. Just manually changing the instruction pointer. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Though the question is now, if, are we just gonna have jump uh, mem or no, jump lit and jump? Or uh, let me just keep this at jump equal, and then jump like reg, where you can specify a register instead of a literal. Yeah, that uh, might be a good idea. Yeah, and then do that for everything. Yeah, so maybe. Oh, oh, that's a bit. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess it's, you can still do it, of course. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gonna be used up quite a bit of our address space, but that's all right. And now there's also another uh, thing we need to think about, uh, because we can do it in a way where um, you do it like uh, the other assembly, or like the. Yeah, our assembly, where you can have to first compare two numbers and then call jump. Or we can call jump with the two numbers and then the address. Or the, the two numbers and then the register. So we'll either have code like this. Um, hello. Ah, oh, whatever. Um, like move or a CMP. EAX to 4, or uh, 4 to EAX, and then jump equal address. Or we'll have code like uh, jump equal 4 EAX address. Hmm. I am not quite sure uh how to do this or like which one of the two we should pick they both have their drawbacks 
But I think the last one might be easier to implement. Probably. You don't, because then you don't need a separate flag byte, so that's... Yeah, exactly, then. Cause I, in my other computer, I also didn't uh, work with flags. Let me see if I can get, uh, see how I did it there. Then I also, like, jump not equal, jump, uh, jump equal, jump left than, greater than. And let me see how I did the instruction themselves. Uh, reg value is not register. Oh, hmm. so I think I actually might have actually had a compare instruction here. Where, I, but the thing is, uh, here I worked with the accumulator register, and I didn't have that in the. Oh yeah, here I just compared stuff to the accumulator register. But I don't have that in um I don't have an accumulator register in this one and I'm not thinking I don't think I'm gonna add an accumulator register. So I think I'll actually just use the bottom syntax. And then just like I would put into between the first two parameters, so like move A into B. I will, I will do it like jump greater than, well, jump if 4 is greater than EAX. Yeah, I think that will work. So we have jump lit, jump reg, jump equal lit, uh, and everything else, 5, 6, 7. Oh, uh, I didn't do these yet. That's the fun part about building your own computer like this. You can make these arbitrary decisions. And <laughs> while you do have to weigh them off carefully, because there's gonna be some uh, there's gonna be some wiki wacky stuff some uh, somewhere down the line if you do stuff wrong. It is interesting. Also, I am uh, I've made a decision, I think. Because my call is gonna be a little bit more complex than the one in um, uh, in the current assembly. But my call will save all the current registers to the stack, so none of the registers are callee saved. Or caller saved. The system will save it for you. Because that's something that I really hated. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's, it's something I really hated from uh, assembly. So, you know, why, why just not do that? <laughs> so then, like, in assembly the stack looks like uh, return pointer, uh, base pointer... Wait, wait if, if they're all... Uh, Kali saved, then you can't return a value. Yeah, that is also something I was thinking about. So what I'm thinking is all the registers are Kali saved except REX, and then REX will be the return value. Oh, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. And then in that case, you don't have to worry about anything, Look, especially because we only have, like, what, six registers? It's really annoying if, like, two of them are Kali saved, two of them are color saved, and, like, hell, even, like, four or five of them are already parameters. I'm thinking of like probably adding a few more uh, register by the way, just going like uh, uh, R8, R9 Yeah, so it would be E8 I think Yeah uh, So like doing this E10 and E11 and that would be 7 uh, or uh, Actually it would be R8D not B, right? D. R A D. D yeah. Is by. Or we just call them E eight because why not? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. In, in <laughs> the in the old convention, it would be T. But this is our domain now. <laughs> okay, and the reason that these are off because in the um. Like in, in the actual convention, like E A is also the eighth register. The reason that that's not the case here is because the E I P is usually below here. And uh, uh, RBP and RSP are usually in between those two. But uh, this is how I'm doing it. So EA will be 7. I don't care if that's confusing. <laughs> uh, however, we do need to make a few more longs then. We need to make 4 more longs. So inside of our CPU, we can go up to the CPU class and have... Uh, 4 more longs, that's 11. Is that correct? Yeah, because that's 0 until A. So 0 to 10 is 11. That makes zero sense if you're like not into computing, but you know. 
Uh, Alright, so what were we doing? We were going to implement the jump instructions. So, um... Okay. Let me actually order this as well. So here we have uh, uh, and then after all the moves, here we have the uh, arithmetic instructions. Yoink. After this, we have all the calls function calls and after this after all the calls we have all the branching logic or the branching instructions yeah that's what that's the word I was looking for okay sick so that means that now we can go here and copy a case of this oh shit and uh, let's take one like this. Paste. So we'll have the instruction. Oh, we'll have the instruction uh, jump e uh, jump lit because that's the that's the easiest one. Which means we will get a literal, which is fetch thirty two. Uh, and this will be uh, a long address equals fetch thirty two. And we can say, um, yeah, that's it. So we can say the instruction pointer is equal to this address. It's that easy. This is all that happens when you're doing a jump. All you're doing is just setting the instruction pointer to a certain address. And then we can say, okay, now we'll do jump uh, for a register. Then we can instead of say fetch, and then we'll say register. And then we can say the instruction pointer will be equal to will be equal to whatever register we just got, or the content of whatever register we just got. And this should be. Uh, this doesn't. Does this work? No, it doesn't. This should be a byte, right? And then we can, or uh, we can convert this to an int here. Uh, I think it does that implicitly. Yeah, sick. So that's the first two instructions. I'm actually gonna test this real quick. So here we've got a, f a little bit of stuff that calls putchar and just puts an A and that's it. I'm also going to uh, remove this real quick because we know our memory run uh, works now. I'm going to remove this real quick because we don't need this. Wow! This is actually really clean to look, and write, uh, look at and write. What the hell? Sick. Okay, so now if I run this it should just execute everything we have and quit. And print an A. Nice. Okay, so what if I do this now? I'll put this at memory address 0x100. Or like maybe 0x1000, whatever. No, 100 is good. And then I'll say, okay, mov... Um, uh, or I'll, I'll, I'll say int i... Beforehand... So then starting from zero, we've got uh, uh, what are we gonna do here? Okay, yeah. So we're gonna say instructions dot jump a literal, and then we're gonna add a literal which is just four bytes, which will point to zero x zero zero. 0x, zero, 0, zero, zero x what is it, uh, zero 0, 1, one. and then zero, 0, again. So now we're, this instruction, is all this is doing, it's saying jump to address 100, and then at address 100, or 0x100, zero 100, we will uh, just say, okay, print the character 40, uh, yeah, 41, in this case, uh, the, the letter A. So, let's see how that works. Ah, nice! Alright, so it's print A, as we expected it to, and then it quit. Oh, that's great. 
That means our conditional logic is working. Uh, or not conditional. Right now it's only branching, but we'll make it conditional in a bit. So, all we need now is to have a, a default instruction. Let, let's do jump equal. So let's do jump, uh, jump equal. Oh, oh no. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, guys, I'm going to have to brainstorm uh, a bit more. <laughs> because right now, we are only saying, are we going to be jumping to a register or a, a literal? But we also need to know if we're going to be comparing it to a uh, register or literal. I think the compare option is better in this case. Otherwise, you have too much to function. Yeah. Yeah, at this point, it's probably better to just make another register that holds the outcome. Yeah. So that means we're going to be working with an accumulator-based system. Uh, have any of you well, watched the ISE uh, exercise mm -hmm. yet? Wait, the? Uh, the uh, uh, in instruction set, ar uh, ISA, instruction set architecture lecture that was uh, due for like end of this week. Mm. It's like for CEO, it's going to be what the um, the next uh, test is about. I haven't. Okay. Uh, that basically talks about stuff like this. And it also talks about the uh, accumulator register and stuff. Uh, Alright, so we're going to add an accumulator register. I'm going to add it right uh, before the instruction pointer. So I'm going to say, okay, this will be the accumulator register. And basically what this will do is uh, whenever we, uh, 0a, 0b, whenever we compare something or whenever we uh, add something, multiply something, subtract something, the output is going to be in the accumulator register. And the same goes for comparisons. You're always comparing with whatever is in the accumulator register. So in this case, we're going to be working with more instructions, but the instructions are simpler. So that is a SISC or a RISC? What is it? What you could do is move it in uh, in the accumulator and also in the target register. In, and also and into what? To, like move it into two registers. The output. The one. Uh, yeah, but like if the user wants to get it out of accumulator, you can just do move accumulator uh, into something else. Because accumulator is just a register you can use, it's just a place where we're going to be storing stuff. So in this case, all that means that it, that within all our add stuff, we need to say uh, registers, registers dot accumulator. Um, okay, so basically, instead of, um, if you do like mole uh Ooh, wait. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. So our multiplication still works with EAX and it puts the output into the accumulator register. Okay, and we're gonna be doing the same with um uh hmm. Okay, then we still need a bunch of stuff, because now we know, uh, let's see, in our case it would be if a operator, for example, equals to b, then jump c. Uh, so b is no longer a... Uh, B is now constant, so we know we're going to be comparing whatever we're comparing to to a register. But then we're going to jump to C. So now we still have two variables, namely what we're going to be comparing and uh, what, where we're going to be jumping. So we would uh, still we have to have... Hmm? If you just add a compare uh, yeah. instruction, the, and then uh, you uh, just jump later. Be, yeah, that's true. Then we, then we would... Power a register and a, a literal, for instance. Yeah, honest to God, I you think. Also and you also don't have to use the accumulator then. Yeah, but honestly, uh, I think the best option here 
is uh, instead of being able to jump to a register, just say jump to a literal. Just so this is always a literal. So then we can compare either a register or a literal to accumulator, which we can uh, which we can enter an accumulator or, or a uh, a register or a literal, and it will jump to an address which is a literal because honest to god, even if you're if you're always using literals, then jump tables aren't possible, or at least not with uh, non self modifying code. <laughs> self modifying code. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> um, that is way. indeed that is indeed correct. That is like one of the either the sacrifices we have to make. Like the, the issue with uh, comparing is if you have a compare instruction, you don't yet know what you're going to be doing with that. So then we're going to have well, to make flags. Yeah, just yeah. make yeah. a flags yeah. in your CPU. Yeah, just make, make a flags flag array. Hmm, it's not something and that I'm used to, and but... set those flags on every instruction that uses them. No, just set it on compare, I would say. Yeah, well, I mean... If you're subtracting, you also set those flags. Yeah, indeed. Nobody ever, like, uses them, except... I think... Um, like, 80 people send me their codes in total for... Uh, uh, for asking with help for the... Uh, Multi uh, the, the multiplying loop, and I seen Sounds only like one person. Of fraud. Uh, not really. I'll I'll get back to that in a bit. But uh, one person actually used jump overflow, which means if it is bigger than we can handle, I will uh, I will take the input uh, and print and print like, hey, the number is too big, which was really smart. But I oh nice. Yeah, it's it's a really <laughs> smart thing, but I haven't like seen anybody else use it. So mo most people don't even know flags exist. And for the people who don't, uh, what flags basically are is whenever you're doing an instruction that uses them, uh, for example, with the jump overflow, uh, if you're multiplying and the multiplication is bigger, or like the result of that is bigger than 64 bytes, uh, the overflow flag will be set. You can like literally check the flag with like jump overflow or jump uh, signed or jump whatever. Uh, we're probably not going to use all of the flags because some of them have to do with uh, unsigned and signed. Uh, stuff and I'm really at this point only wanting to implement uh, unsigned uh, stuff But we will see I will add a final static public byte um, Compare and that will be zero uh, zero x four f and Then all of this will still be possible Mm-hmm Okay, so now we're gonna look into what flags there are because, like, I've I've done everything I've done thus far before in Python and in JavaScript, but I've never zero. done this before. You have zero, negative, overflow for unsigned, and because we're doing only unsigned, the other one, the carry, isn't used. I mean, carry. Oh, wait, wait. Um, let's see. Wait, overflow is for signed oh, uh, overflow, and carry is for unsigned overflow. Okay. So you would you wouldn't use the overflow flag. Yeah. So we we have carry flag, parity flag, adjust flag, zero flag, sign flag, interrupt flag. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm gonna more. go with what you said. <laughs> so we'll make a, another thing That's with the flags. And these are just gonna be booleans. So I'm gonna say um, flags, and this this will be a list. I'll add it soon. Public long uh, or boolean array of flags, and which flags were useful again? Overflow. Well, overflow is for our sign. Oh yeah, so my bad. Carry, carry, carry flag. Uh, what else do we have? Zero. Zero flag. Sign flag or negative. Yeah. Uh, the last one. Uh, we'll get back to it if we uh, if we think of I'll something. I'll check my documentation. Yeah, you're you're uh, you were the one who made the 
Yeah. The computer from uh, Logical Gate, right? Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, so... Uh, let me make this a new boolean array. That is three long. And as per usual with Java, I'm going to add a new Java cloth called flags. And that will take the flags that we have. And that's going to be zero flag. Oh uh, no, let's see, carry flag. Uh, zero flag and S flag, SF sign flag, I think. And that's just going to be zero, uh, one, and two. Yeah, those were it. Yeah. All right. So now this is going to be a, become a little bit more interesting. Also, if we're working with flags, I don't think the um, the accumulator register is necessary anymore. Um, hmm. So I can either remove it, or I could choose not to and like keep it in. Uh, I think I'll remove it. That way we can stay like close to. Uh, Intel IDs uh, or Intel's architecture. Oh, a nine. Uh, yeah. So that means everything I just added, edited to turn this into accumulator is gonna go back to register. Uh, a two B. So it's gonna be reg two. It's gonna be reg. Um, EAX is EAX times whatever we have. Okay, I think this should be it for the um. Oh, I also had a typo here. And here, convention. I think this should be it for the, the change to that. So this this will still stay the same. And then we gotta implement compare. So let me see if I can do that real quick. So if I have compare instruction. Then we're still gonna have two instructions. <laughs> Ironic. Oh I think we actually might just have enough there. So we have compare a register to a literal and we have compared a register to a register or the other way around literal to register register to register so this is going to be compare literal to register which will fetch a literal and uh, hey you're a yeah you're a model on this this girl, right what did you say? You're a mod, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Could you add some more homework rooms? Can no, I add what? More homework rooms. So we have like three homework rooms at least. Oh, uh, hmm. Unfortunately, the only thing I can like do is mute people. Uh, you're gonna have to uh, tag staff and admin. Okay. Okay, so... Here we have to compare literal to register. And uh, let's see, we have literal. General. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then we can have long register value. Actually, this byte. When we fetch something, it will just be a byte, but we can. Yeah, we can just keep that a byte. And register value will be registers uh, reg. So now we've got the uh, compare a literal to a register. Um, and we here got literal reg value. Now, what we're going to have to do here is change our, um, change our flags according to what this is. Um, okay, let's see. So we've got a carry flag. What does the carry flag do? Um, it's like when you add the, when you add an 8-bit, for example, the 9th bit is the carry flag. Same for subtract. 
Mm. I see. So if the uh, if there's like an overflow, like uh, for example, zero x f f f or like yeah, right. Uh, this plus this uh, will equal to, or let me actually put that beneath each other, uh, equal to 0x, 0, x zero uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So if this is the case, and like the 8th bit is here, that means that the final output will be this, but the carry flag will be set to 1. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, so that will mean. Oh, hmm. So we're working with 32 bit values and longs. So now I'm not sure what happens if you set a long to a value above long, or what even happens during this multiplication. Let's see. Let's see what happens. So here I'm gonna uh, move a literal to a register. Or actually let... Oh, shit. I don't know what I just undid. Okay, yeah. So if I now do... Uh, let's just do it like this. So I have uh, long b is uh, 0x F -f 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 -f. And that's the maximum value of uh, a long, I think. Or ac actually, it's like. Longs are 64 bits, right? Uh, long is 32. Sure long is 32. Okay. Or is that like a long, long? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so this uh, is 32. Yeah, long, bit. long is 32 and quad is 64. Ah, okay. But is that the same in Java though? That's what I'm checking right now. Uh, okay. Java 64 uh, bit to its complement integer. Okay, so if I do uh, int here. Oh, but that's, uh, mm, that's also not quite unsigned. Oh, whatever, I'll do, I'll do it in the signed way. So if I here add 1 and then I do uh, uh, bape and s out. This should print either like a, a zero or a one or something. Yeah, that prints a zero. So that means after this, this is just like a bunch of uh, ones. After this equation, it will just be zero x one zero 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 zero. But because it's an integer, this one gets dropped. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So during the add, uh, let's see, we're working with longs. So here we can check. Oh. So this value will be too long to store inside of a long. Mm -hmm. What's the type higher than a long? I think uh, that's long, it. Long, <laughs> <laughs> long. Or isn't, long. <laughs> or isn't that Java? Mm. Uh, I think that's C. Oh, that, that yeah. might be C, yeah. yeah Can I remember doing that in our uh, I think the longest the highest you can go in Java. Really? I think so. Yep. Oh, that sucks. At least for the primitive types. Yeah, then you have to use big integer and stuff. Oh, yeah. oh. yeah, you could do big int, but yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna work with big int. What's though. big int, by the way? Is uh, that sixty four? A big int is a number as big as you need it to be. It's like a dynamic number. Oh. So you you can do like uh, whenever I work with uh, mul uh, like calculating RSA, which is just like a real easy uh, modulo or a power function, but that's way too big for any primitive type to handle, so I use big integers. Mm -hmm. And that's like over a thousand bits long. Um, let me see. Which I don't think we're fitting in our memory. <laughs> <laughs> primitive... Okay. Yeah, no, it's big integer, big decimal. And the big integer can be as big as you want until there's not enough RAM. Imagine not having that automatically in Python. Haha. <laughs> Flex. <laughs> it's, too, it's too big to print. <laughs> there we go, baby. Woo! <laughs> Python Love is me. just a lot nicer for a lot of things. Yeah, Python is a lot nicer for like everything. 
But it is not object oriented. There should be like a, a, a language which you is You can do Python. OOP in Python. Yeah, you can, but it's not like. It's not as efficient as Java. No, it isn't. Python in general isn't as efficient as Java. No, no, not system. by a long shot, but yeah. And Java is very inefficient. <laughs> okay, but now what I'm curious about is if, if you I. Want in here, C, you have to do it in C. No, assembly, come on. Have come on, paying attention. Uh, on, bytecode. <laughs> I was about to say, I, you actually, you can write bytecode? Uh, I have actually, well, uh, during reverse engineering yeah. some stuff, I've actually been like, for example, if I needed something to pass a check, I would literally open up the program in uh, in a hex editor and like just literally change the byte, for example. In this case, it would be from jump lit to uh, jump not equal lit, and then it just wouldn't jump, stuff like that. That works. Yeah, it, it, it's fun. It's a, it's a neat little tool. Real programmers let the butterfly flap once, so that must <laughs> be great. I think we all know the meme. We all know the meme. Okay, uh, so if I do uh, s out, I cannot type s out, and then do like zero. Uh, let me let me make that long again. Long b equals zero x f f f f f f f. f. If I print b, what will it do? Print minus one. Ah! Unsigned! No! Shit, long is signed. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was wanting to do like, okay, if B is bigger than B plus one, then we know that we've got an overflow error. But that will do signed instructions. Because. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Flag checking is far more easy with easier with logic gates. <laughs> yeah, or just with Python. Uh, okay. So either well, we well, we can also do it if we can implement binary addition by ourselves, but that seems like a really annoying thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hmm. Is there a way to turn a long into bytes? Um. Probably. Oh wait, I've got an idea. Uh, long to bit string. What you could also do is uh, check if when you're adding yeah. when the um, we had two positive numbers and the result is negative, then it's overflow. True. But then we're working with signed overflow. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> hmm. uh, this is interesting. Okay, what, what if I do um, long dot two binary string? Do I have to import anything for that? Uh, it, it would still work. Hmm? You, uh, when you add two number, uh, two positive numbers, and um, let's see, wait, <laughs> now we're now we're going real deep. Is this how you I out of out of all do you include shit in Java? Uh, import, but it IntelliJ will auto import. You don't have to. Yeah, fair. Uh, so if I remove this, will my error go away? Because right Actually, now I'm not sure. Do you have auto import enabled? Oh, my error was that. Mm. Ah, I hate that my life. That works. Okay, so now if I do string dot. Oh, uh, if I remove this and say dot s out. Okay, so now we have the binary string of that. Okay, that's sick. So now if I do this, but then plus one. I think we can, if we can check the length of the string and see if it is less than the length of the other string, then we should be good. 
Uh, yeah, I think so. However, I'm thinking... Hmm... I think there's some edge case. Yeah, exactly, that's also what I was thinking. This Could is... probably also just implement uh, binary addition with these strings, though. Yeah. Just reverse the strings and then uh, loop over them. Yeah, or what Zero we can also do, we can, we can make it even easier, because our addition works for everything except for the flags. So what if we take this, uh, make this a string, then take, uh, then like, pad them to the left, so that they're both like 64 bits long. Is this 64? This is 32. 32 bits long, and then check if both of these are a 1. And if that's the case, it's going to overflow, and in every other case it's not. Or, that's not true, because if both mm -hmm. of the- Oh, no, then we have to implement binary addition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Time for a quick binary addition, it is. Oh, God. That'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it-, it Hmm. It- Hmm. <laughs> this is... A situation. Because I- I, I mean, there's probably, like, long to f uh, dot from binary string, so it would work. Um. But now, now I'm curious, what would happen if I do- uh, S out long dot from binary string. That doesn't exist. Uh, you uh, no, you would have to test if the result is um, smaller than the largest of the two. Mm. Ooh, wait. Long has a size, and it's the number of bits used to represent a long value. Oh, wait, that might be like. The genuine, like the general one, instead of that. Yeah, that's a static. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't want. Oh wait, no, but this is like everything in here is gonna be static because we're working with the general long and then pass the long itself along. Yeah. There's two binary you, strings. You can you can just check if the largest value of the input is larger than the result for addition um so you mean like check if oh wait you mean is b is bigger than b plus one yeah oh well, the issue with that is that that would work for unsigned addition <laughs> but if we do it if it be signed again <laughs> yeah it, mm, this is this is a really complicated but interesting issue uh hmm so long dot two binary string will return a string so if we have that string eh, you know you know guys you know guys let let's do binary edition let's let's go let's do binary edition seems fun so I'm gonna make a method all the way up here, and that's like a uh, public binary add, which returns a long. Yeah, because our our addition are gonna be longs anyway, and it takes as input uh, a long a, long b. Okay, <laughs> this is this is this is so not a good idea, guys. Um. So first of all, we can take our. Uh, we started with so many more people than we ended with, but that's just because this is like so much more complex than what I uh, I expected it to be. Yeah, I'm actually just kind of playing Super Mario Odyssey in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> works. That's valid. I mean, as long as we have like one person, then it's worth streaming. Um. So here we have string one equals to, uh. String string one equals to this. String string two equals to this. So now we have the binary string of both of these. Um. Oh wait, my bad. This is not supposed to be two. This is supposed to be b. Okay. So then. Uh. Can we turn a string into an array of characters? Uh, yes, dot two char array on the string. 
Uh, two char array is a function. Two char array. Uh, so we can a say string, char. A string is already a char array. <laughs> well, yes, but technically. Yeah, but it's not a char array yet. Yeah, it's like it's like a, uh, in memory it would be represented as a char array, but it has a lot of different fields that just an array of chars wouldn't have. However, I yeah. think if we can just index strings like we can a char array, then we should be good. If I yeah, do like I string one can. zero. I think you can. Uh, <laughs> oh, so not uh, let's see if we can. That's strong an error since it's not an array and Java doesn't know to do with it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now you if I could do, do char... string dot something, forget what. Okay. String one array equals to string one dot two. Oh, hey! I actually also already guessed what I wanted to do. Yep. So now if I do string one array zero, yeah, there we go. The fact that you capitalize your variable names annoys me. I have absolutely no idea how I do it. No, I'm my I'm doing <laughs> it. Like my my variable naming scheme is completely arbitrary and random, and it's super annoying to myself yeah. as well. But <laughs> fair enough. Typical Python programmer. Hey, shut up. <laughs> okay, well, so Python is more snake guys. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, most of the time, but like everything happens there. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so now we've got this. So now we can. Uh, we should also have an array of. Can we turn this into. Uh, py Python has these real neat features that I would totally use here, but I cannot do that, and it's really annoying. What do you want to do? Uh, wait, I'll, I'll show you. Not in this shell, because this shell is absolutely wasted because of my power. <laughs> um, so let's say I have a number... Oh, you're to chart to an end, or... Which is like this. I want to do like uh, A equals to... Or uh, X equals to 1 for X and A. Or, oh, that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I know what so you mean. It, it would just give me like this. But yeah. it's not quite possible. Like, it's, just, it's called error or list comprehension. But yeah. that's not possible. I've got a bit of Python. So I've, uh, it's supposed to be like this then, I guess, whatever. Whatever. Okay, so. Uh, you should probably zero pad the strings as well. Yeah. Before yeah, that's true. you convert them to char arrays. Because otherwise it's going to be a pain. Yeah. Because um, now you're just getting index out of bounds exception yeah. everywhere. Uh, list, uh, string Java left pad. But using a string equals. Are oh, using custom methods? I don't want that. Just use a string builder. <laughs> With a custom string method. builder? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's the one explained straight in front of you. <laughs> it's now. Up. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um. I don't think Java has a built-in uh, padding function. That is absolutely stupid. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Um. At least I have String Builder built in now. It used to be an external library. Oh my god. Um. Whatever, I'll just... Uh, you... <laughs> Yoink. This, this code is now mine. Andy, you didn't see anything. <laughs> uh, hey! That's how programming works. You just steal 90% of what you type from the internet. I mean, to be honest, valid. So now I can say pad left zeros uh, with, with a length of 32 with this. So now I can say again... What do you mean? I think it's the other way uh, around. Oh, yeah, input string, then length. I was already like, what the fuck? Okay. Length. There we go. Okay, so now we should also have um, string out string equals a string and a boolean. Or I'll, I'll just use like an int, carry equals zero. 
And Kerry will be like zero or one. I guess that could be a boolean, but I don't know if you can do, can do like implicit uh, addition with booleans. I don't think that's still in Java. Okay, so right now we can go uh, for. Actually, I'll do x is thirty one, and it, it, while i is bigger than zero, i minus mm -hmm. minus. So that means we'll start at the rightmost bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we can take. Um, uh, in temp equals to uh, string one array i plus string two array i plus carry. So now there's two cases, either or like three cases, you have four to cases. Them first. Mm hmm. They're still in string four. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. Good point. So if I here say this should be an integer first, and then this should be an integer first, and carry is already an integer. Um, okay, that should work as expected. So now we can say if temp greater than two, or in this case temp is is greater than one, because if it's zero or one, we're good. If it's greater than one, we should do temp equals to temp minus two. And say carry equals to one. So what we're doing here is in the case that it's. Hmm? Uh, wait. And then uh, no, never mind. Okay. So in the case both of them are right, that would uh, that would be in like say example uh, one. Uh, one one plus one one. Uh, this would be the case where uh, you'd get. The first one is just one zero. And this this will be a carry flag. And this will be a zero. But here we've got a tree. So like the one from this one, the one from this one, and the one from the carry. And in both of these cases, we should subtract two and say the carry is one. Okay. Uh, the default case should be that carry equals to zero. So that if it's not one, then this should be good. And then we can just say string out string equals to uh plus. Plus. oh yeah i already yeah well um and how do we turn one into a two string oh yeah <laughs> shit that's cool uh so we can say uh temp yeah. dot two string. you have to reverse the out string after you you are done with the for loop oh yeah that's a good one as well because now we're just adding them to each other. I guess we could actually... Well, what what you ca also can do is, uh, instead of outstring plus equals stem dot two string, you can do outstring equals stem dot do two string plus outstring. Oh, that's even better. Dude, this is sick. Uh, plus outstring. Nice. Okay. So... This will do proper binary addition, so far. But the question is, at the end, is the carry equal? So, now, once we've done all the thing, then outstring will contain the string that we want. So we can say... Uh, now I'm gonna look up... Convert binary string to long Java. Uh, you can use big integer. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this not <laughs> fun? Hmm. <laughs> parse long seems to be the. Yeah, but parse long. Mm -hmm. Long dot parse long input, comma two. Yeah, but the issue with parse long is that it doesn't work with negative. Oh uh, wait. So now this is the way we want it to be, but because we want it, uh, because we're working with a yeah. way that doesn't work the way we want it to be, we cannot we're do it. We're working with unsigned. Yeah, but now we're working with signed, and that's why we're having to do no. the binary representation because this would just return it as an unsigned number. Yeah. But if you would do like long dot two bit string 
opening bracket long dot parse long opening bracket like I don't know all one comma two it will be a different number mm. because the method does not work with one's complement or two's complement we're working with uh, unsigned anyway well uh, yes hmm, wait hmm are we though? Also, apparently integer dot two string doesn't work. Uh Dude. Char? No. Uh wait, let's fix this first. So <laughs> uh, I like how this has gone away from uh the ISA oh, thing and inter you have to do integer to string and then int. But we're we're working with longs though. Oh integer oh yeah, I mean for like this, yeah, okay. In integer dot do string temp. Okay, cool. Um But the parse long method recognizes it as a positive number. Yeah, exactly. That's our issue. So uh, but we want that, right? Um. Yes, but no. Because these uh, two binary string. Wait, will will two binary string return the unsigned? Mm -hmm. Unsigned long value of the argument plus. Oh wait, no, okay, that's good. Um, yeah. So what was it? Long dot two string. And I so that will be out. Long dot parse. Oh yeah, that was it. Parse long. And that will be out string two. Yeah. Uh, so we can say. Uh, Output long equals to, and then we can say like long output long equals to this. Then we can say uh, so for binary addition. Is there anything else than the uh, set uh, the flex? Hmm. You have to set the flex though. Yeah, but like anything other than the carry flag. The zero flag. Yeah, but mm. oh wait, the sign flag is uh, you aren't using that one. Since you're not working with negative number. But I, I know for a fact there's like more than two. That oh yeah, the sign flag is for signed numbers. Then you have the overflow flag for signs overflow. And... Wait, I think the sign flag is for the sign and the output. Yeah. So if it's negative or not. But if you're working with unsigned numbers, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, because if you're, if both of the numbers are unsigned, there's no way that the number is smaller than zero. Mm-hmm. Ah. Uh. <laughs> and there, all there is also a parry flag that checks if the the number of ones in the number is even or odd. Yeah. No, I don't know what we use that the for. I, I don't know. Either. Like it, it, oh, I know for I know for a fact text. that it, it is used for uh, the parity flag is used for making sure that the uh, that the number you got is right. So like yeah. data preservation Error correction. Error yeah, that. Correction. But hmm. first of all, let's let's close this. Second of all, let's um. Oh, it was, uh, it was already closed. Now why am I getting an error? Oh, missing return statement. Uh, return output long. But because we did it this way, we can actually say uh, flags flags dot carry flag equals to carry. Mm. Pass it to boolean first. Ah, that explains it. Boolean carry. Mm. Cannot cast into boolean. 
Uh, then just carry equals one. I just had a fucking heart attack. I did a key combination I didn't know. <laughs> what did you do? Uh, control shift backspace, so I thought I removed my whole file, but it just moved me to a different tab. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and this is why we save very often. So we're still getting some errors here. Yeah, okay, that's because we were doing shit here. Okay, so now we can do uh, long B is that, long uh, C, or let's, let's do long A and long B, and long B is uh, 0x10. So now we can do, ooh, yeah, no, okay, binary yeah. add, or what was it again? Binary add, yeah. Yeah, binary add, sick. Um, down here. Binary add A and B. Hmm. Non static. Ma oh, yeah, it's static. No, it's not static. So I have to say my CPU dot binary add. Oh, that's fair because I need somewhere to get the flag from, anyways. Because we're referencing the flag. My CPU dot binary add that, and then we can do my CPU dot flags. My CPU uh, or flags carry flag, and then we can do this dot s out. So this should be one, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> what? Uh, it is in binary add and this line. Um, Out string is nine six nine six etc. Yeah, uh, that shouldn't be though. How come? Uh, what if I do temp dot s out? Because that's obviously the best method of debugging is actually using um, print. Of obviously. What? You do, by the way, have a debugger in IntelliJ. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. You have an amazing debugger in IntelliJ, by the way. Yeah, correct. Um, hmm. Mm. So, for some reason... Print a string one array i... Oh, that turns it into the fucking... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this turns it into um Oh wait. Into the yeah, the <laughs> character code. Ah uh, yeah. Oh that's annoying. Okay, um uh, what you can do is offset it. <laughs> oh you dirty bastard. That would it will work, but it's not pretty. I think you can uh, uh let's see the, the char. Charity code of one oh Yeah, a character code of one, character code of zero if I do this minus 48 and if I do this minus 48 okay minus 48 and you do it uh, two times so you can just do yeah but I'm doing it like this to like make it more uh, visible for me that I'm actually representing yeah. the characters okay let's try that again oh hey 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 boys 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 oh uh -huh. the carry flag is true oh that's sick Okay, but now if I do like this with like D or A, then this should not be true. It should just be false. Oh, ooh. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um. Hmm. Uh. But we're we're adding. Hmm. <laughs> Shit. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but this shouldn't. This shouldn't um. do that. What if I add zero to this? Still true. <laughs> okay, what if oh, I no. add one to this? What? Go back to the function. <laughs> oh wait, maybe it's padding from the right. Huh. Uh string two dot s out. What is our string two becoming? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's uh, cool. So. 
that should work. Or wait, let me check this. So that w if my theory is correct, that would mean that if I do change this to F A and then A, yeah, then it should not be the case. It should say false. F B should that be false? <laughs> and what if we add one and one together? Is that false? Okay, okay. Try F zero 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 X. Uh let's see, F one, two, three, four. Go back up to the function. Let's see. Or, uh We are going from the last character of the thing. Let me actually print the output because now we're only working with that and that's not very nice. So if I now say uh, long result equals to this and I do uh, result to... Uh, re didn't we have? Did we like specifically import a function to turn a thing into? Yeah, I think there's like uh, over here. We have. Oh no, that's bad. Left zeros. Yeah. We oh, it's long dot two binary string. That was it. So now I can do uh, long dot two binary. Capital L. Ah, yeah, because about long. We're general, talking about the long. Object instead of the long type. Yep. Yeah, it's so confusing. Dot s out. Okay. What? Zero. <laughs> Come again. Um, <laughs> that makes sense, exactly. though, right? <laughs> hmm. That's right. Try That's printing up. the out string in the for loop. Oh, that's a good one. Huh? Wow. <laughs> now it wants. Okay, so yes. one, one, what this is, is uh, 0x800 zero uh, zero zero is actually 1. Zero 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 I am not sure how. <laughs> Maybe it is turning it into a sign. No, I'm not clue. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, this is one of the most interesting issues I've seen in a while. Indeed. I'm sorry for the people who thought we were gonna, gonna be doing more like actual branching and stuff, but it's gonna have to wait a bit. We're apparently figuring out how to do binary addition in Java, and it's not working. Why is there? Huh? Okay, wait. Um, and what if I just literally print a to binary string? Like this, oh, this is before and after our um, our call. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see what's happening. Uh, it's taking the first yeah. Time Wait, huh? Uh, let me let me let me check this real quick in Python. So if I do uh, bin of zero zero or zero x eight zero bunch of zeros, yeah, that that's correct. And why does it represent it like this? Is there something about longs in binary that we do not know? Is there like a different way to represent longs than to represent... Oh, I think you need more zeros. I think uh, if you do long the two binary string, it expects it to be uh, one padded instead of zero padded. One padded? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's padding it with ones. 
Like, add more zeros to your A. Um, add more zeros. I think, like, here? Or Yeah, just add a few more zeros there. See if yeah, that but the issue with, like, two more zeros is that then, then it's bigger than a long. <laughs> no, it's an oh, integer. Wait. Oh! You need to put an L behind it. Uh, now, now not only do we know this, but now we know that we're actually not working with longs. Because right now here we're doing 32-bit addition, but that's actually integer addition instead of long addition. Yeah, we need 64-bit. Longs are 64. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now if I do 64 here... Six, this six, explains so much, but so six, little! 63, by the way. 63. Oh, uh, yeah, 63, and then it goes And down. don't forget to update your string 1 and 2 with uh, pet left 0. Yeah, good good call. Okay, this um, th this uh, this might help. It a lot. Yeah, it makes sense as well, once you realize it. I hate that Java assumes everything is an int. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, there we go. Yes! Ah! Uh, fuck, man! <laughs> So now if I add 1 to this, it should still get false. I like how it's still doing like the jumping and stuff. Yeah, now we're now we're talking. Mm -hmm. Now if I f add FFFF to this, it still get false. But I think this is also because I added the L here. What happens if I put a 0 here? Because then it shouldn't work. It's Number now too, too large because it's an int. Oh yeah, but now if I do like this, what will happen now? Wow. Okay, so if we're working with big numbers, just add an L. Don't question it. <laughs> Early integer to long adds like a whole bunch of ones. Yeah. Oh, but we actually what? had that. When you're trying to move from an integer to a long, it explicitly said to just add a bunch of ones. Like in the manual, and I didn't understand why, and I still don't. Why not add zeros? Zeros make much more sense. Exactly, but it doesn't work like that if you're... Wait, no. If it's... Wasn't it that if... I am I, I want to just pull up the lectures. However, uh, since this is going to be streamed to YouTube, we are not, like... We cannot show any private things from the TU here. About, uh, what lecture do you mean? Like the, uh, um, the data representation part 2. Uh, Wait, do you mean that if you, like, oh, have a right. bit integer, uh, like... Are we talking about negative numbers here? Are no. Kind of For some reason, if you add, if you add a positive integer from an integer to a long, it will add once. That I, makes I, no with, sense. With once, it may, it, with uh, with negative numbers, it makes sense, but with positive, it doesn't. What the hell? It, it or wait, 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 wait. It didn't pet uh, one. Oh. It was zero. Guys, I get it. Are you? Are we petting it with once? No, 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 no. It is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. But that's because if we turn this into this, then the value will be 0b100000. Oh, yeah. Which is a negative number. Yep. Because okay. it's a signed number. So if we do um. it to an L, it will just be 0000100. Ah, oh, that's annoying. But now what happens if we do the biggest number possible with a long? Actually, that's not really required. The biggest number we can make with our jump literal and bullshit is uh, f f f f f f f f, and since longs are really really big, like four times the size of what we can do, this shouldn't be an issue. Hmm. Looks but this is curious because our <laughs> okay, so when we add two literals, the largest value we can do is actually zero 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 or f f f f f f, f which is an integer. So we shouldn't be doing sixty four byte addition because the lo the largest we can do is two registers which are both thirty two bit. Right, you guys get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I so it should be thirty two bit addition. Yeah. Yeah. So we should actually be using ints instead of longs for addition. Yeah. But the the thing is, uh I think the reason we use longs 
was because uh, then we have like 31 b spaces left on the left side that wouldn't mess. So basically a long is a really, really big unsigned int. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> okay, so if we turn this to 32, and then we turn this back to 32 as well. 31. And then we'll take 31. Uh, yeah, I keep messing it up, thank you. Uh, but w what do we do with our dish? Int. Do we though? Um, because if we have int, have then long dot two binary string that should be int two binary. String. Yeah, but the thing is, and what we're doing is, is if we wanted to treat it as uh, integer addition, as in like thirty two bit, mm -hmm. but as an unsigned integer addition, then we're gonna have to work with longs. Yeah. Uh, Wait, then we, did, then, we, then we didn't have to implement mm -hmm. binary addition anyways. We did this all for nothing. Yep, we did. Yeah, we, we could have just done like long dot two binary string and then long like the binary string and then check if the the thirty first bit is set in the in yep. the binary. We could have just done that. <laughs> we we could have just done that. Yeah, we're stupid. But that's because like well. the a long in binary and a long in Java are two different things. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because you have a long word, a double, uh, which is a double word, and you have a quad word, which is a long in ba in Java, and ah! <laughs> oh my god, I hate Java just had to be different. Yeah, I do understand it, because like their integer is the same as our long, and that was something yep. that was decided a long time ago. Ha, <laughs> get it long. Um, it's even worse, actually. A long on 32-bit Java is still 32 uh, by bits. What?! And an integer, is that like 60-bit? No, 32 is all. So a long and an integer are literally the same in 32-bit. Yep. <laughs> so we have to know but at least architecture no of our testing system before anymore. we can work, uh, write a working... Ah! <laughs> no one uses 32-bit anymore, though. So. Yeah, that's true. That's good. Though if our... Uh, like, but that's only because longs got introduced later. In Java, after 64-bit. Yeah. But like, backwards compatibility, apparently. Yeah, I guess. Ah, okay. Hmm. <laughs> so now we've got a function that works as intended, right? So... Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> if we add two numbers... Oh, wait, we haven't checked it yet. Let me check it. So now this should return an overflow. True. And yeah, and it did. Yeah. And that's because it, it, it usually wouldn't work like this. Like if we just added them, it wouldn't work like this. But because of how we did it, it only counts the first 32 bit because we're working with integer addition or long addition. And then it converts that to a long again. Okay. I think this is what we want. And let me actually just print result. Um... Oh, actually, this is with an overflow. So when it's overflow flag, then we don't really need anything anyways. We just check the overflow flag, and we know the result is incomplete or incorrect. Um, okay, good stuff. <laughs> so now we can do uh, add. Instead of this, we can do uh, binary add. This, comma, literal. I think. Mm -hmm. And the literal cannot be a negative number. That's good. Um, though, what if one of the... Uh, one of, like... What if the literal is F, 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 F? Does it still work? That's the question. Yeah, I think it should. Yeah. Okay, Good. cool. So... We still return along as well. We implemented binary addition. <laughs> because why not? Yeah, which is like... Really humoring. <laughs> okay, cool. So, now... We've got binary addition. We still need binary subtraction, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, okay. So, 
let's see. We should do this for. Can, can we do it with uh, two complements? So, divert the bits and then add one. So you get the negative uh, number. Uh, what we can also do is we can check the. Uh, we can see if one of the numbers is bigger than the other number. And in that case, uh, set the flag and then just. Yeah. That's also what we could have done here. Yeah. We could have just checked if the sum of the two numbers is bigger than the, ma than the maximum allowed. A simple if statement was enough! <laughs> <laughs> A simple if! <laughs> <laughs> I could have just done. <laughs> if. Um, registers rank. Is bigger uh, plus lit is bigger than zero x one f one zero 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 or one zero 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 zero. This would have been enough. L. <laughs> <laughs> this is really tilting, you know. <laughs> yep. I'm. I like the fact that there's only four of us left because the rest just found it too boring. <laughs> there's five, right? Oh yeah, there's five of us with, with me included. Yeah. No, one of them is muted, so. But yeah. Oh my god. We, we, or he's just doing something else. And yeah, that, that's fair. <laughs> no, we, we are the diehard. This is this is the, the, the elite. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm just trying it out in Python, actually. <laughs> Alright, that's good. Uh, what did you say, Rom Romir? I said I'm just trying to build this thing in Python while you're doing it in Java. Ah. I mean, my, my own project is up in GitHub. If you want to have a look at that, but it's up to you. Uh, okay, so I, I'm. You you can bet your ass I'm gonna use this now, even though it's not needed. <laughs> so now we can do this. Yeah. Okay. So now for the subtraction. Um. So we know. Uh, hmm. How do we check this? We just check if. Okay, so the register is what is going to stay. So if the final output is below zero. Yeah, can we, can we just say like, if registers reg is below zero? Uh, minus literal is below Oh, yeah, yeah. Zero. And this is honest to God the reason why I... Um. Um, that hmm? would be the same as uh, below literal. Uh, yeah, could work. Uh, this works too, though. I d I think it like doesn't really matter for performance. Yeah. Um, okay. So what what flag do we have to set in this case? Also carry flag. Yep. Okay. So in this case, uh, flags. Flags dot cf equals one. Uh, yeah. And then else, it is a zero. This is a really you important thing. That. Hmm? You can shorten that one. Yeah, true. To, we can just say uh, flag carry flag equals to that. Yeah. What is the key code for fixing typos? Alt shift. Uh, alt enter. enter. Alt enter. Oh. That's what? not. <laughs> alt enter brings up the menu with everything on your current cursor. Ah, I see. And uh, you can just press enter twice to correct it as well. Okay, cool. Anyway. So alt enter, enter, enter. <laughs> alt enter, enter, enter. First, first result. Double shift is also an amazing tool. Double shift? Yeah. What's that? Hit shift twice on your keyboard. <laughs> uh. Whoa! Every function, every file, everything in IntelliJ you ever want. Just type it in and you'll find it. That's cool. I'm, I, I am 100% going to use that. Okay. Um, so now we have this for uh, this. Now we should do that as well for this register. Uh, that should be register 2 minus register 1. Uh, 
Okay. So now we've done all, all the flags in here. I cannot be asked to do them in the multiplication. Let's do the compare. You can, al you can also check the for the carry flag after you do the subtraction. Hmm? Like you do the same calculation twice now. So you could ju just check after the subtraction if rec 2 is uh, less than 0. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Uh... Yeah, that's fair because yeah, okay, cool. Uh, okay. Okay, so we've got this, and now the compare instruction. Hmm. How does the compare instruction work? I'm literally gonna Google it. Compare is this uh, subtract, but without. Um, putting the result in anything. Um, Except for the flags, of course. But the yeah, the flex only the flex gets it. Yeah, that makes so sense. So you like can just do that if statement. So it's like this one, and then I paste it here, and then I take registers okay. reg and literal. So then we can say, okay, uh, literal is that, and, and right value is this. But there, there should be more flags than this, right? Like, we're no right now we're you are only using unsigned. Well, is, is this enough to more, do? But if you keep it simple, that's. These flags are basically the ones you use. But like, is this enough to just manage everything? Like all the instructions we have over here, like the jump greater, jump less equal, jump e greater, yeah, jump equal. I don't think so. Well, wait. I don't think that's enough. No. I think we need a flag end. that tells us if it's like equal or not. Still. Yeah. I mean, well, equal is just a zero flag. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, let, let, let's add a zero flag then real but, quick. Uh, greater than and less than, for that you use the, um, the negative flag. Oh, yeah. The sign flag. Yeah, and then if it's neither equal, well, if it's neither zero nor negative, then it's positive, so it's greater than. Yeah, so let's see. In this case, the zero flag should be set. If register rec2 equals to zero. Uh, yes. Okay, and I can and use the same also here. also have to... When do you set the sign flag? Hmm? You also have to set the sign flag. Oh, the sign flag. But what is the difference between a sign flag and a carry flag then? Wait. Yeah, that's the same, sorry. Because these two only mm. give me um, four combinations, and we have eight, I think. We have more. Hmm. We've got all this. Uh, well, of course, then we've, we've got oh. like literal register. So let's see, let me map this out real quick. I'll copy this. Uh, let me take away all the, all the second ones, because we only need the literal versions. So we've got okay. jump equal and jump not equal. We can do these with the um, with the zero flag. Yeah. Oh, zero flag. Uh, okay. We can do jump greater than equal and jump. Wow, there are only six instructions for this. Yeah, it's pretty oh. easy. Yeah, no, oh, I was about to say. Okay, then it's pretty easy. So we can do the top one with the z okay. Hmm. Jump greater is uh, if the uh, carry flag is not set. So this is CF equals to and zero, and this is the CF equals to one. And for uh, the jump greater or equal... Then yeah, let me just check the zero flag as well. Yeah, and for the jump greater... the Let's check if zero, zero flag, flag is zero. Is false. Jump greater is the zero flag is false. Yeah! 
Oh my god, that was way easier than I expected. Okay. I expected it to be way harder. So let me let me just put this somewhere. Like I don't know. I'm gonna put it here. I'll change it up later. Um so for the compare we have the carry flag. And then we also have the zero flag, which is this. Double equal. Hmm? Double uh, equal. Yeah, yeah, sign. my bad. Okay. And I think that's it. Wow, I expected that to be a lot harder. <laughs> it's so surreal that you only need like two flags for this. Okay. Um, let me first take this. And we're first going to work on the jump equal. That's going to be equal. Uh, that's going to be easy. Jump equal. Let's just say, okay. If, uh, and we need to make sure that we do fetch the address beforehand. Because we cannot just say, okay, check. Check if the flags are set. If they are, fetch the address. Because then we will uh, get an issue with um, that we haven't fetched the address yet. And going to interpret ad ad the address as instructions. So we fetch it beforehand and then we well, check you if... Don't, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. You can just put it in the if. This one? Yeah. Actually you do because uh, when we fetch the instruction, it will only take the first instruction and then it, the instruction pointer points to just this memory. Yeah. And then we need to fetch that as well so the instruction pointer will point to the next instruction. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So we do jump equal lit and jump equal register. So these are the... Um, yeah, these are the things we need to do for that. Oh, do for that. So then we can do if... Um, let's see, this is the zero flag. Or flags. Flags, flags. <laughs> zero flag equals to zero. Or in this case, false. Then we do this. Or uh, the zero flag has to be true. My bad. Alright. You can remove that equals true. Yeah, it's you. I could remove it, but for readability, I'm just gonna re leave it there. I think. Okay, so now we've got the then jump equals. So then these the two, uh, and then equal. jump not equals. So that's gonna be exactly the same, but with an exclamation mark here. And this is gonna be jump not equal, and this is gonna be jump not equal. Whoa, coding is hard, guys. I like how it's telling me like, hey, you you can just not do this, lol. Like no, I want to do this. Can I? Can I get that away? Uh, alt enter. <laughs> well, it can be simplified. That's what it's saying. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I'm like, I, I wanted to just ignore it. Uh, then yeah. you need to alt enter arrow to the left, and then you can say to ignore it. Uh, suppress for suppress, and then method or statement or like. Yeah. If you say method, it won't worry about that. <laughs> oh, I hate this, but... You can just tell it to do it on the method, and then it won't bother you for the entire thing. Oh yeah, if it's like... If it's only indeed like the this thing, then I can just say... For the entirety of uh, step. Yeah, I think now you need to use add suppress warnings though, so... Hmm? Uh, just to redo it and do it on the method from the yeah. menu. Cause I'm what, pretty what sure you need add suppress warnings instead of. Uh, let me actually look here. Add suppress for method. Method. I would do. Yeah, and this one is also. Hmm. Hmm. What's that? What the, what the fuck is this? This doesn't make sense. That's always false, apparently. Yeah, but it's not. <laughs> uh. Mm. Like, I, I would understand if it was correct, but this is literally false. <laughs> Let me see. Uh. I, think it, I think it thinks so, because these things are by default zero. But they're not always zero. But it thinks so, that... Uh, I'm pretty sure you're not setting them ever, so it's sure it's zero. There we go. Alright, fixed it all. Oh, I know I'm uh, Actually, guys. no, it's right. Hmm? Uh... Oh, uh, this should be like the zero flex. Yeah, I know why it's saying it. Because <laughs> above there, you're checking if it's uh, less than zero. 
Yeah. So one of those two is going to be false. And therefore it's probably going to end up being false. I get what it's saying. But no. Um... So here, everything we have is still correct. We only jump not equal, jump not equal, jump equal, jump equal. Okay. So that means that we have done these two. That's great. Now only four more to go. Uh, so let me copy this. So we will now check for the jump greater equal. So that means the zero flag has to be true. And the carry flag false. Uh, and the carry flag the carry flag has to be false. Uh, uh Java. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can do the same over here. Okay, that's cool. Um, and then for the jump greater without equal, but this means that. Oh, the I the deleted one too much. The flag has to be false. Uh, let me see. This is... Yeah, this should be just E. That means the zero flag is false. False. False! And the uh, um, flag... Uh, the carry flag is also false. So this is it for these two. And then only two more things, namely the carry flag is true and the... I was about to say, I forgot something, but I needed to remove these two. And then this is for not equal to... Jump less than. Yeah, I, I am... Yeah, yeah, my bad. Jump less than... Though I am, we're, I'm still making a mistake, and I'm seeing it now. So this is jump less than or equal to. Uh, I'm curious if you guys can spot my mistake actually. Uh, uh, let's see. This, for this one, it's true. Give me a sec. I'll <laughs> I'll put it in the code real quick. Uh, and this is true. And this is true. Sorry, what's the problem? Uh, it's in the it's in these two. Well, that's the same conditions. That's one of the issues. Actually, yeah. no, that's fine because they're the no, same not. thing. It's checking if it's the zero flag is true and the CF is true. That will never happen. It's jump Shouldn't, equals yeah. or. Less yeah, it be an or. Mm. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that should also be the case here. So in, either in the case that it, that the zero flag is true, or that the carry flag is false, that means it's greater. Yeah. Okay. So I think that should be all of our instructions. Oh yeah, it's all fuck yeah, all everything's purple. Um. Except compare rack rack. Yeah, but I, that's like not that hard. I'll just go like up here. Uh, yoink yoink. Compare reg reg, and I'll just say uh, reg one, or this reg two, and this is reg one, and this is both just a fetch. Oh, uh, and a reg value one and two. Now the question is, which one are we gonna make? Which one? Mm. So we have compare literal to register. I said that if we did uh, jump less equal, we'd say literal less or equal to register. So when in this case... Hmm? Rec, uh, when you do subtract, you do um, register 2 minus register 1, right? Yeah, like if we check something, it's the first one compared to the second one. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. I think it's uh, two minus one. Okay, we'll see. Uh, so this is reg two or uh, reg value two minus reg value one. 
and this is reg value 2 minus reg value 1. Um, so this should theoretically be all the, uh, all the logic for everything here, correct? I'm still getting an error somewhere. Uh, line 253. Ah. Hmm? No idea why. <laughs> Profile. Oh! Byte. Ah. <laughs> yeah, you cannot give long as a thing. Okay. Um. Hmm. So. This then. This should theoretically work. However, to test if it's working like intended, I will do some uh, stuff. So, here I will say, okay, first we will... You have to, hmm? you have to move some fellows in the registers first. Yeah. First we do uh, instructions.movlit into reg, and we move the literal uh, 0x100 and then let me see because yeah okay so then we um, we compare and then we say instructions dot compare a literal to a register Okay, so then we have first the literal, which will be uh, a smaller number, like 9. Um, oh, yeah, and we should probably move that into a register, so we'll do registers.eax. Uh, and then we compare our literal to register eax. So now we want to jump if the literal is bigger than the register. So if, no, no, the literal is the 9, the register is the AAX. So we want to jump if the literal is smaller than the register. So now I can say uh, my CPU.mem is instructions. Jump less. Uh, jump less to a literal. And then we have an address which will be, and the the function to check. Uh, zero. Wait, give me a sec. Okay, the the function that's gonna execute is just gonna be this one, uh, which will, as we talked about before, just push, um, uh, put an A there. So if there is an A here, we're good. If there's no A here, we're bad. Still running? There's an A! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have an A! <laughs> and now if I jump greater, then there should be no A. Ooh. Okay, that's not very good. It's jump greater than and jump less than have the same condition? Wait. Jump greater than as all the flags are false, and jump less than as all the flags are true. Okay, so we're looking at the jump greater than literal. And that should... False. False. Yeah. And then less than is... False true. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> okay, so from greater than is, or equal to is either it's equal to or it's greater than. So here we check if it's not equal and it is greater than. I think there might be something wrong with our um 
with our compare. Yeah. We're comparing literal to register. Yeah. So the literal is the first one, and then the register is the second one. And they're both long. Mm. Should give us plenty of space. Um, hmm. Wait, hmm? it's greater than zero. Okay, wait, so for greater than, the flag, carry flag has to be false. Oh, no, no. So uh, greater than, CF is zero. In the case where we have uh, the first register one being three, and register zero being two, the, uh, register one being, uh, I don't know, a hundred or register two being uh, nine, or that's the case we're doing now. That means the carry flag will be reg two minus reg one, so that's minus 91 is less than zero, which is true. Yeah. So, should we so swap these two around? Um, but when you compare, you uh, subtract the second one. Uh, you subtract the first one from the second one. At least in ADAT syntax. Yeah. But the weird thing is, right? I hear compare the literal to the register AX. So I compare 9 to AX. And in the case of jump greater than, it'll jump to 0x100. Which is happening here, because it's putting a chair. Oh! Jump greater oh! than has no uh, jump address? No, 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 no. I see the issue, and it's a real bad one. Okay, so we didn't tell it what it should do at... Wait, no, it's... Mm -hmm. I thought I had it. I thought maybe it doesn't stop here, so it'll yeah. just naturally flow into the rest of the memory. And you also don't have to jump. Yeah, that is the case. Yeah, yeah, that's the case. Uh, and we do have to jump address because it's a literal, <laughs> and that's like this address. So I wasn't there when you uh, implemented call exit. So the the code isn't zero for call exit. Uh, well, call exit, all it does is just stop looping. Yeah. But that's why I... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, call exit isn't zero. Like... Yeah. Yeah, so it, it just resumed execution until you quit, just like in, uh, in normal. So now we can check it. Because every step fetches... Yeah. Every step here uh, calls instruction.fetch, so the instruction pointer automatically moves forward here. Okay, so now if I do jump less than, it should not go. <gasps> it not. Awesome! Okay, that, that's actually really sick. So... Okay. Now that we know this... It is correct though, because we check if uh, we compare a literal to a register, so we check if the literal, namely 9, is less than the register, which is a 1000, and that's correct. So it mm -hmm. should jump. It's working. No, it's not working, because... Hmm. It is... But I guess that's because, like, the order of operations is, in my head, different right. than what I would expect. You have, you have no jump address for jump less. Hmm? Have no jump address for jump less than. Yeah, it is. It's a, it takes a literal, and the literal is right oh, behind it. Oh, sorry. That's okay. So I I'm presume sure. it is like. I, I have it in my head where uh, if you compare literal to register and you have jump less, it checks if the literal is less than the register. 
However, I think the AT&T syntax does not work like that. So there is like, if the register is less than the literal. Um, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to do it the way I find readable. That's probably the best. Yeah, so I'm going to change these two values around. Uh, one, one, two, two. And uh, in that case, it should be literal minus register value and literal minus register value. Okay. Either I could have done that or I could have like changed the way the carry, fl uh, the carry flag works. So I could have said like, hey, if the carry flag is uh, here instead of true, I would say false. However, I think my, the code works now the way I intended to. So I say, okay, I compare the literal 9 to the register EAX, which contains 100. So if 9 is less than 100, we jump, which it does. Okay. Now I'm curious. Can we make... Uh, can we make the power routine? I think we've got everything, don't we? We've got a put jar. We've got printf, which we're going to use. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, no input yet, but that's all right. We just load. We'll just load them in. We've got jumps. We've got conditions. I'm, I'm not going to make it a full subroutine yet, so we don't need call and return. Increment and decrement. I guess I could make them, but that's like just add one. Yeah, I, th I think we're right. I think we're ready. Uh, I'm not going to pull up my own code for the case that somebody has, still has to redo their uh, their code in um, later in week 6. I don't want them to commit fraud on me. Probably smart. Yeah, but that means if I move, uh, for example, say uh, 5 into EAX and 5 into EBX. Or let, let's, let's adhere to the calling convention EDI and ESI. Um, we'll make a loop, so let's add a label here, uh, let's see, so this is, uh, let me, let me just check something real quick, i.s out, what is i here? i is 12, so we'll be jumping to 12, which is our loop label. Uh, like labels themselves aren't really implemented yet, so you just gotta say jump to the address of this. So uh, let me actually remove most of this. Um, so inside of the loop, or uh, hmm, let me also set our ax to one because that's gonna be our output, and then this will be. Uh, it's plus six every time, so the loop will be at uh, at eighteen slash uh, zero x one two. That's eighteen, right? Somebody check that for me. Yes, that's correct. Okay, and then uh, eax will contain one. You can also just write eighteen if you're like don't want to convert to x. Yeah, that's true. Time. That's true. Uh, however, I think I'm just gonna keep it there. So. We've got uh, we've got everything here, so now we can start doing the instructions itself. So we can first, oh shit, uh, we can compare. So now we say um, we compare. Oh, we also need a looping variable. Well, I guess we can just uh, dec decrement the exponent. Um, let me make a little note for myself up here. EDI equals to uh, base ESI equals to exponent. So in the loop, we first um, let me copy this one and we compare uh, instruction. Compare a literal to a register, and the literal is zero, and the register is um, registers dot. The SI because that's going to be the yeah that's going to be the um, exponent and while that is not true 
So then we can say um, jump equal. So if it is equal, then we can jump to uh, our after code. So then I can say uh, after. Oh hell, that's even better. I, I can just say um, i equals zero x twenty. So now this code is forcibly at zero x twenty. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's because that's because the way how I did it with i plus plus. That's really neat. Ooh. I just gotta be really, really, really careful because Do not ever go above it. Yeah, or um, yeah, yeah, indeed. Like if if I had like four move instructions here, it would go over this, <laughs> and that's not what we want. So we compare, we jump, uh, jump if equal to the after. So then we can say, okay, jump to one hundred. How much is zero x one hundred? That's like two fifty six. I'm not sure if 256 is enough. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna upgrade this to 400, so then we will have plenty of space. Then we'll do uh, another instruction, which is uh, uh, multiply register uh, by register. Or I, yeah, we made we made it that it's rex by register, and rex already contains one, so that's good. And we can say okay, multiply that by the exponent and Decrement. We. Oh, I almost forgot the decrement, but and then we can say um, it's this long, so I can just copy this. Uh, subtract literal from register. We subtract the literal one from register esi. All right, that's looking good. So uh, then we jump back to the beginning. So I can say copy this one. So now I can say, okay, just straight up jump to a literal, and that literal is 0x20, because that is where our loop condition is, or our, our loop is. Uh, and we set that ourselves up here. You might just want to delete the, yes, that one. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, good one. Okay. Um... Okay, so this is the end of our loop, so now we can uh, work on the after. Uh, we already have... Uh, oh, this, this should be then 400. So now afterwards, it will jump here. And there will be a... Um, the output will be an RAX. Uh, so that means we gotta insert a format string somewhere in memory. To print this out properly. This is really cool that we can actually do this in something I, I started on like less than five hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So okay. To finish it then us. Uh, so I'm just going to take this real quick and put this up here and say like at uh, 0x1000. I'll put uh, a few instructions, namely, or a few things, namely, oh. How did I do that again? Uh, char. Uh, Conversion to char and then percentage. I think that works. And that should be percentage D, right? Yes. Okay, and then I can add a, then I can just add a zero byte manually. Uh, okay, so in the after function, I can do move a register to register. So we're gonna move um, the RAX to RD. Oh, RDI. Because the output is now in RDX and we want it in RDI or ED EDX and EDI or EAX into EDI. Actually, it's going to be SI, and we also want to move literal to register. This is going to be a hell to debug, by the way. We have no GDB yet, <laughs> <laughs> yet. Uh, literal to register, and that's going to go into E uh, uh, EDI because that's going to be our format string and our format string will be located at 0x00 zero zero zero, um, zero 0x1000 yeah. and then we can call exit okay so let me go through this program real quick so what we do is we move a 5 Wait, into did you call printf? Hmm? Uh, ooh Whoa. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yes very sharp, my friend. You just deleted put char, so I thought, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, equals to instructions. 
go printf. Okay, so from top to bottom, we have move 5 into ESI, move 5 into EDI, move 1 into EAX, and then we compare 0 to EAX. If it is equal, we jump to 400. Otherwise, we multiply RAX by, uh, or EAX by EDI, then we subtract run from ESI, and then we jump to the literal 0x20, which is over here. That should be correct. Yeah. Um, then we jump to 0x400 here. 0x400 is move EAX to ESI. Yeah, that's correct. We move 0x100, uh, 1000 to EDI, 1000 to here. And that's percentage G0 byte. We call printf and we call exit. But what about the vector registers? The what? The vector registers. Oh, no, not the vector. Fuck off. Um, <laughs> I think this should r run 5 to the 5. And just to be sure, um, here we can do 5 to the power of 5. That will be this. And that is representable in a long. And by printing it as percentage D, we should just get this. Whoa! Oh my god! It nice. works! Cool. It works! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Nice! Oh, this is mm -hmm. sick! That's very cool. Oh my god. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Damn. We made a power function. L let me, let me check what, what is the limit. So, if I say 5 to the power... 0x1000, <laughs> what's yeah, it going to print? To the power of 5. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah, I figured as much. <laughs> uh, what if I, I say... 0x1000. Uh, get... No, wait, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, wait, I'm curious, let's see, which was the... The base is EDI, so that's this one. So if the... Oh. If the base is oh. this... You put it in the first <laughs> order, damn! Hmm? Well, I'm used to having it the other way around. You put EDI in first. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Damn. So now we have uh, 0x1000 to the power 2. And that should be just overflowing. So this should theoretically return minus 1. Um... That is... No, actually, I, I think that might be number. correct. That's still correct, I think. 0x1000 yeah. to the power 2. Yeah, that's correct. Not nice. Now, what if I do this to the power 4? Should this print minus 1? Maybe. No, that's also Apparently still correct. Not. Wait, is, is that correct? Let me check. To the power 4. That's correct! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> and what wow. if we do this to the power of 8? <laughs> this might be like minus 1 then. Zero! <laughs> oh. Is it actually zero? No, 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 no it's <laughs> obviously not. <laughs> no, but like, should it actually go to zero? It, it um, I think, let, let me see, in, in Python, of course, there's no limitation. It won't so we... go there in Python. If yeah, it's but, but if I look at the binary representation of this number... Whoa! So, if I then look that at the length of the binary slow. representation, that is 99 bits long. What the f... Oh. It's a lot of zeros, that's why. <laughs> oh, probably. Oh, yeah. yeah um, these are weird this powers of two anyway. So, uh, so this, this is 90... Oh, 97! Which makes sense, because... 90, 96 is... Or, wait, 96 is 12. No, wait, 12 byte. 6 times 16. So. Uh, um... Huh? We can also just say that, yay, it works. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, yeah. it works, and it works really, really accurate. I did not expect it to be this accurate. Oh, no. Wow. Okay, you should put this on GitHub. Yeah, yes, I, I should. Um, wow, okay. This is, we, we made this, guys. We made this together. Yep. Oh, yeah, wow, works. okay. Yeah. Um, this is why I like programming. You... I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not getting emotional, but I'm almost there. 
<laughs> the bros. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Cool. Are you gonna make an assembly parser or just to hmm? like victory lap? What did you say? Are you gonna try making an assembly parser as well, or an assembler of sorts? Hmm. I'm actually working on at least like something that can interpret text and write it into this machine code. Yeah. Like if if we look at growth promo, my great because, friend. Because I think I think uh, you could automate the memory I plus plus part pretty easily. Yeah. So if we look at our low level JavaScript um like this is where I got my inspiration from. He made a sixteen bit virtual machine. Hello. Oh, he made a new episode? Cool. I made a 16-bit virtual machine, and I followed along with this when I made my first one. I still did it, like, in about the same order as now, but, like, there are still some differences. Like, this one uh, has an accumulator register, we don't, etc., etc. But, um, we did what he did, what he explained in 40 minutes, we did in 4 hours. So, by, we're now currently at, like, episode 2. Then he did the stack, then he did memory mapped I.O., then he made some extra instructions, arithmetics, binary logic, uh, and then it made an. And then he made an assembler, and he did it for like. Uh, that that took like. Where where would we just did two episodes, making it our assembler, took six in his series. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Hmm. I'm not sure how to feel because I I kind of want to do it, but it's also. Then we're not lo no longer working on Java, but we're working on understanding the library that does Ooh. the interpreting. Because we're not going to be able to make the interpreter ourselves. Hello, person who just joined. Um, hey. Okay, so... I'm curious. The next step would probably be stack. Uh, well, is it so hard? Probably it's, not. it's not too hard. I, I do want to... You might want to make the stack a different array, whereas in normal... Oh, no, no, no. The stack memory. is totally going to be just the um, memory. Because that's memory. like... That's, it's, the, the fact that stack is just part of memory is such a core feature of the stack. I'm, I'm not sure, like, going away from that might be... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it might be useful. D however... I'm kind of um, saying it's because of our limited memories. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Our memory space is very, very limited, and especially if you're working with recursion. Um, I'm kind of hmm. saying like maybe have to stack in a separate variable, but abstract that away. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Wait, why? Um, we are limited by two bytes, but that's because that was an integer, right? It, why were we well, limited again? An integer is way bigger than that. I was about to say, why why were we limited again? Pretty sure because Java, if I remember correctly. Yeah, but what, what stops us from saying... Um, doing this? <laughs> now it says it it's an integer number too large. What yeah, if I turn this into a, lar into a long? Uh, hmm. Arrays I'm are still sure indexed by int. That's uh, integral values. Um... Yeah. Array index is still an integer in Java. Yeah. Hmm. However, what's the maximum value of an integer? You're now you just have to remove the doing a lot oh, of yeah, the L. L. Uh, so, F F F F. So this is what we have right now. Yeah. This would work, but F Can F, we F, F, F. Oh. Oh well, wait! Uh? I think it crashed at runtime. Let's <laughs> 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 see. Uh, let me check. Yeah. Oh, Negative array size exception, that's what we had. Wait, but if you just set the first to zero then? Yeah, the first bit is uh, 0x8000. Oh, yeah! If yeah. you set the first f to zero, yeah, if it's seven would work actually, yeah. Yeah, so what if I did... Seven doesn't work. Yeah, no, but this works, but that's because it's like 0 f f f f f f f minus 0x8000. Zero 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 zero. So I'm just, all I'm doing with like Subtracting that 8000 is just toggling the first bit. Yeah. But it's still too big for the VM size limit. Yeah, if you make it the first character is zero, that works. Um, yeah, it's the same as deleting the seven, so. Yeah. Yeah, true. Well, seven but I, I'm... Wait, what? Why is this. Hmm. That's Why fine. is this not too much? If I do like six here? So it. It gives me the error if I decrease it by like five to like five, 
Uh, that's an out of memory error heap space. So I'm pretty sure we're just running out of the Java heap. I I, I must say that it's not. Me. Wait, what? Zero. What are we doing again? Uh, let me check real quick. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, let me, it let actually just, makes sense. Yeah, let me just do this. Like, what, what was it again? Five to the power five that we had first. Okay. So the moment this this either st becomes really slow or doesn't work anymore, that's the moment we stop. Or we get an error. One of the two. So this works. This doesn't work. We just tested it. Does six work for you? Because you have uh, increased heap size. Um, the six did work, I think. Yeah. Well, then that's the max size, I think. Yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, we can do a, like a binary search for the max size. <laughs> well, but uh, that's not. Anything higher probably fucks up. I mean, we can do like seven zero. See if that works. That work. Oh, oh, that works. What about seven e f f f f f? Or I think I might have it. What if I do seven f f f f e? So like the yeah, the largest positive integer well value minus minus one. Oh, that that doesn't work. But what if it's I? It's VM limit. Yeah, but but I can just uh. Yeah, for array VM limit. That's you could probably find that. What the actual limit? Yeah, we well, have to account for like the program size and all of that stuff, right? So the apparently the max is two to the power thirty one minus one. Yeah, but two to the power thirty one minus one is just uh, integer max int. And this yeah, should be. Hex. Yeah, but. Yeah, but no, so there, there is some memory that's been taken by other variables in your thing. Oh, um, yeah, that's like the total size of the heap or something. Yeah. I think that's the max size it can ever reach. Exactly. Which okay, makes so sense since Java heap is 32 bit. Yeah, but that would mean that if we subtract it like. Uh, what is it? 14? So what if we do this? Oh, uh, minus the size of some variable. Oh, but, like yeah, the other, like the other stuff here. here. Yeah. But this is a long, so every long, how many bytes is a long again? Eight, right? Uh, eight, yeah. So we have two to the... But you're gonna need more space than that. We have, yeah, we have this number. Minus the long, or the long, so that is minus four times eight, minus three booleans, and booleans are stored, are they stored as one bit? Or just stored as one bit? I'm pretty sure bit? they're stored as ints. Yeah. Ints? Like a D. Yeah, you need to use bit shifting and stuff, bit masking. If you want to compress them together, uh, I'll, I'll believe you guys. So that's like four times three. So and then this number, if we convert that to binary or to hexadecimal, I'm pretty sure that's still gonna error since Java needs more space than just its variables on its heap. Uh, D three. We'll see. That seems work. to work. And, and what if I do D four now? Like, if, is this literally the reason why? Oh, it still works. And what if I do F4? That's gonna crash, I think. Oh? No? No? no. FE? Wait, didn't we already say that this would work? Huh? So this F should work, but it doesn't. FE work doesn't work? No, what if I do F8? D? That's gonna work, I think. Yeah, that works. This is so arbitrary! <laughs> <laughs> Try D. <laughs> We are binary searching the limit of an array in Java. <laughs> so this works, but changing this to an E doesn't. Well, we found the limit. <laughs> <laughs> By binary searching this shit, we found the limit. That's such a like, weird... As soon as you create a new variable, it's gonna break. Yeah. Okay. Um. I'm. I'm not sure if this will break other stuff though. Like once. Once we add more stuff. Like let's say. Try to allocate a second array, in your constructor. Uh. That also gets like that size. See if. Oh that yeah, that's it. a good one. Just create like a second memory. Memory two. Electric boogaloo. 
<laughs> okay, we'll see. I think it's working. What do you oh, mean? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> what do you mean? Okay, so it really is just the limit of one array. Yeah. So we we have found the limit. It exists, and this is it. Okay, well, cool. Now we have a memory space that is no longer limited. Well, maybe it's like the last couple of uh, bytes stores information about the length of the array. Yeah, so. length of the array, Probably, maybe yeah. uh, maybe parity to check byte preservation. There's okay, so... There's probably some metadata in the array. Uh, 7D... FF... 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 Wait. 1, 2, 3, 4... So this should be a D. Yeah, and that first D should be an F. Oh, yeah. 7 F, 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 D. Okay, so this is correct. And now our, uh, we are a lot more free in what to do. So we can just implement the stack in memory. Yep, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, first of all... Uh, excuse me, give me a sec. Uh, by the way, I, I don't know if you guys know, but I've like during all of this, I've still been playing RuneScape for like two accounts at the same time. You you play you always play RuneScape exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I always He's play not. RuneScape whenever I'm doing anything. <laughs> no, it, the only thing that different is if I'm doing two accounts or one. <laughs> uh, all right, so we've got this. That means that we need to add two pointers. So we have ESI ESP. So I'll move the instruction pointer over here, and I'll move two more here, which are E stack pointer and the E base pointer. So then if we if I do this again, seven, eight, nine. Oh now it actually fits. Oh that's sick. <laughs> nice. So E9 is actually zero nine. Whew. That 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 that's it was that at some point as well. Yeah. But, but that was because I, 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 I that's like when I showed that these two were supposed to be there but weren't. No, I think it was when you had the accumulator in there. Oh, yeah, that could be, because well. I had the accumulator and the instruction pointer, so that would take the place of these two. Yeah. But, okay, so, when we start off, we should... Oh, no, no, ah! Okay, when we start off, we should, uh, during initialization, set the instruction pointer and the base pointer to the same value that is literally, uh, that is relatively high in memory. So, let's say, uh... Registers opening bracket registers dot esp equals to uh, let's let's say this is the start of the thing. You should probably define two constants for memory size and stack size, and use those. So you I can mean, the stack size the stack size doesn't have to be constant. It can just go as far as it wants. Once uh, I would say max stack size then, because that's still a thing. Um. Might be cleaner to just yeah, yeah, to find be, a constant. Like, once you hit that limit, you can just exit instead of the entire thing crashing when it's out. Yeah. Though, hmm. And just having them defined separately is just easier later. Because you kind of understand where these values come from. Yeah. Because if you look again at this code, it's just like, uh, what was this again? Yeah, I can just say. I'm not going to define a value because that will take memory space, but I can make a comment here, like, uh, 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 if you make it a constant, so public static final, it won't take memory space. So I've optimized that out. Yeah, that's fair. I, I, I'll, I'll just put it here. The max memory size is 0x. Uh, it's literally up here. But we won't like need it necessarily. Like This is just an arbitrary chosen value that is just a little bit above the value, above the max, or uh, below the max. And since the yeah, stack down works, that's all right. Is that actually enough space for the stack? Well, no, no, no. Uh, the stack grows downwards. Oh yeah, it does actually grow down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it it has all those bytes until it starts overriding normal memory. Then we're fucked. Um. Okay. So what do we do now? Uh, we've got the stack we working. Should define some basic um RBP RSP operations. Yeah. So in our instructions, I'll do uh. Stack manipulation, and oh, that yes, we'll, right. we'll create a few of them. Like, we won't have the different... 
Like, in, in the uh, Sith world, you have, uh, like, for example, uh, push B and push C and, and shit. That's not what we're going to do. We're just going to always push uh, full bite or full uh, literals. So Thank we've you. got uh, push, and there's nothing to be behind that. Pop, and there's nothing that needs to be behind that either. So we can have 5 0 and 5 1. Wow! Hard. So when we have a pop uh, in the CPU to Java, when we pop something uh, down, uh, let's see, this is still within the case, so I'll put it here. When we uh, stack, what? How did I label this? Implementation of. Okay. Implementation of. Tech manipulation. Okay, so then I can copy this. Oh, over, oh, over here. And I can say instructions.push. And what push does. Oh, we already made these instructions. Sick! So push will take a fetch32, which is the literal that we're gonna push. Ooh, yeah, we, we need push reg and push mem. Or push reg and push. Uh, a uh, literal or uh, yeah let me just do it like this push literal uh, push register pop literal pop register uh not pop red uh, literal you can push a literal push a register and pop a uh, register or in this case pop into a register because you yeah it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't make any sense to pop into a literal because that doesn't work. Mm. And I don't, I'm not going to implement like all the memory stuff will all be done with this. I'm not going to implement like pushing into memory or whatever. Okay, so now we've got push register which will oh which will oh yeah, it uh, this is a long. So we'll take a 32 bit uh, value and uh, it will push that onto the stack. So pushing, what that means, it, it means the reg, uh, the base pointer or the stack pointer uh, registers dot esp is decreased by uh, our literals are how many bytes? Four bytes. Four bytes. Yep. So in like in the case of stack alignment, our there like sixteen bit alignment would be our eight bit alignment. Or a byte alignment. So this decreases it by four, and then there's a write 32 at of the registers dot uh, registers dot esp, and then it writes there the literal value. What does this have to be? Require type int. Do we just cast this to an int? I guess. Probably. I'll, I'll, I'll check it because that's the good part. This is all done in I memory mean, so we can use the fetch print memory app. With fetch 42 you got long and then you write 32 with int. Yeah. Oh yeah, write should probably be a long. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, if, but, we're also uh, getting a long when we grab it from memory. Yeah, let me let me actually look why I did that. Wait, what was it? Two times this? Hey! You can also control click on a method. It's address. Oh! It's, it's the other way around. I'm, I'm a dumb shit. It's the other way around. <laughs> why did you do that again? Shh! <laughs> also, why don't you use git? Hmm? Why don't you use git? Uh, I have used git before. But... I just never really, like... I... I I upload some of the project, like I've upgraded, I've uploaded my Python computer, and I've uploaded my uh, my profile uh, thesis for uh, high school. But I, I don't really, I haven't really coded anything else. But that's because most of the stuff I code is just like small practical things or stuff for CTF. I mean, this is not a small practical thing. That's yeah, I'm, I'm gonna upload this to Git. Don't get me wrong. But not 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 long uploads. You can develop with it, like comments and stuff. Uh, not only publish it on GitHub, but just to track your progress and to yes, be able uh, to... It has source control is actually really, really useful. Like, uh, here, let me let me show you guys uh, github.com slash Oh, no, we saw that. 
<laughs> yeah, no, but like, uh, I actually did that with my computer. Like every time I edited something, I uh, I also updated it, so you can hear she and blame. I mean, like, while you write commit. the code, you can but also the issue is, have commits. Yeah, during there. like committing during my code. It's something I should do, but I like I'm not gonna do that right now, and that's purely because my uh, my GitHub work with private keys, and I'm not gonna show either Palfer my key or my. You don't need to push. You can do it locally now. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to push your uh, things. Media. You can store Git locally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but like I'm, I'm gonna do that like afterwards. Then like after the. If you do project like that, you may uh, some accidentally. Like, you might want to branch it and things if you want. And it will just totally fuck up, and you would not know. Uh, well, that you could use IntelliJ. Version control as well, which is yeah. Version basic. control is just for it. Yeah, like th there, I should use it, but I don't yet, and I'm not gonna start using it okay. on a stream. But yeah, sure. I, I need to connect sure. then, but I, I right. might do it before the next stream. How's the progress on the CPU here? Uh, it is genuinely amazing. We uh, we made the power program that we need to make for assignment one in the CPU. Did did you write it as machine code then? Or did yeah. you write it as uh, assembly? No, no, just machine code. We're <laughs> not gonna have an assembler like at all. I think either for a very long time or never. Oh, you gotta add an assembler. You gotta you, you gotta add capability to. Uh, I'm currently working on it. something close to an assembler. Yeah, the, the issue with an assembler is, um, like, I guess you could make it either like by hand or like have it enter separated, and it would theoretically work. But it's really, really hard to uh, to split everything up properly to make it not uh, be really strict on either white spaces or whatever. I, I might do it later if I've got like all the stack functionality down, memory mapped I/O, and then I still need stuff or still need something to do or want to do this with you guys. Then We're anyway that hard though because all you really? do is split by a new line and then um, y yeah, uh, look at the first a... word in each thing. You should have this in Stack Overflow so we can all. No, I mean not Stack Overflow, but I'm at GitHub. Oh yeah, it's gonna be on GitHub. Great. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably uh, end up opening a PR with a uh, sort of interpreter for assembly. Oh, that, that would be awesome. Yeah, because I've like people... I've almost have it done actually, reading a file into memory with like the instruction and everything. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That's what I've been working on. Uh, so that is registers. Reg. Uh, and this shouldn't be a long, this should be a byte. Okay, so now we got push literal, push register. The uh, fact that Java supports all this is just... Hmm? Every programming language supports this. You could technically do this in BrainFuck. Yeah, you could... Theoretically, yes. You could do this in PowerPoint. Yeah, so yes, you could. Yeah. PowerPoint yeah. is turn complete, you know? Yeah, we, we, <laughs> I, I'm mean. quite sure yeah. all of us saw that. Okay, so now we can do a fetch32 at. Does that exist? Ah, it doesn't exist. <laughs> wait, why don't you have a fetch32 at? Oh, wait. We didn't why call it fetch32 at. We called it fetch32 with just a register. Okay. Yeah. I should probably either, like, get my naming scheme right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you should yeah. really make sure you have standardized naming. No, no, not either. You you just should uh, get your naming conventions right. Just also, right. you can click structure on the left of the IntelliJ, and then you'll see all your functions in this file. That's also amazing. Uh, so let's see, fetch thirty two. The fetch thirty two at oh yeah okay fair, so uh, that means. Fetch thirty two at this can you, address. Can can't you just do replace all fetch thirty twos with fetch thirty two eighty? Yeah, I guess that would work. I'll do that. That in a would bit. that would be a good idea. Yeah, uh, registers reg equals to fetch thirty two. Stop searching. Uh, fetch thirty two thing. Okay, first I'm gonna make sure my code actually works. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna put this somewhere, so that you guys can look at it. No. Yeah. Okay. No. I can. I can just put this in like a file and uh, and upload this. But that's that's because like this or this assignment already was done. If it wasn't. No. Then again, you it's my. You could probably still code. upload that because that's not even like 
close to fraud, I would say. Yeah, that's true. W like, w what? Because, like, if you're gonna take the time to translate this out of your machine code into proper assembly, then you've basically done the assignment yourself. Yeah. <laughs> w w <laughs> what are you discussing here now? Uh, well, this is the code that would run an uh, a power, and we're yeah. discussing like it's assignment it's one. Yeah, yeah, well, that's already been handed in and stuff, so... Well, yeah, but the, the people still have uh, the chance to reset it if they failed it. Um, how so. would you make some uh, functions, like, like that word... You might have, like, a move function that just takes all of the stuff and does it automatically. And then it'll be easier to just write... Uh, the, the, you can yeah, just, like, we, we can make some auxiliary... Like, we can make some auxiliary functions that would uh, do this stuff for us. Like, I can have... Uh, but you've got you've got your memory there in single bytes, correct? Yep. Yeah. Okay, wait. Uh, I'm just gonna upload the file to the uh, to the Yonas assembly chalkboard. Uh, uh, what I'm really wondering is, does it seg fault if it's not 16 line then? Oh no, obviously not. There's like there's no reason for it to be 16 bit aligned uh, unless we in our ISA say, okay, it has to be 16 bit aligned. Or 16 byte long. Well, g given that the CPU you're copying, uh, or, well... Well, you still have the luck of you're running within Java, so you have all Java's protections against... Yeah, and, and not only that, features. like, when we make something that requires 16 byte alignment, then it has to be 16 byte alignment. But until then, we can just say whatever. True. Okay, so let me just uh, remove the bunch of this. Um, all right, get this out of the way. Okay, so we have uh, move literal to register, or actually let, let's turn it into pop, uh, push literal, literal, and it will push the literal uh, 0, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, uh, why does that not work? 7, 8. Huh? Why does... Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, because... Uh, that's hella annoying. Whatever. What? That, ap um. that Apparently, it didn't like doing this. But we we figured a way to fix that, I think. I'll see. But let me, let me first do this. Push this literal. And then... Um, what did I want to do again? Oh, yeah. And then I do pop into a register, mm, pop reg, and then I pop into, oh actually it's good, register CDI, and then I can just say um, my cpu.run, oh and uh, uh, I should add a call exit function, uh, and that should be instructions.callExit. Okay, and then I run it, and then I sh can check the input of, or the content of registers, register EDI. Your call printf, is that using the proper C code, or is that just using the Java version of uh, printf? A bit of both. So, <laughs> You're uh, just using a system out? No, yeah, we're using a system out, but we're using system out printf, and we construct uh, strings on our own from the format string. Uh, it's like a very, very, very limited own implementation of printf. Uh, will it change uh, registers in the same way that uh, happens in assembly? No, not at all. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah. And even and then, e weren't you doing something with your call that it wasn't going to affect registers anyway? Yeah. So, uh, these are all like built-in functions, and I'm not going to like turn that to assembly so that it will, will work that way, but I'm also going to have like a call literal... Or, uh, yeah, just call literal, and then you can just call a function, and it will have uh, all registers preserved, it will have all, uh, and everything like that. Yeah, because then, then you have a slight difference from when you're running it, and uh, if you run the same code, that theoretically works in assembly. Yeah, well, yeah, there, there's, there's definitely going to be some differences. But code that would work here does not necessarily run in assembly. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Um... Non-static field references. Oh yeah, uh, it's my CPU dot registers. <laughs> I got something cool to work as well, by the way. Oh, what did you what did you get? 
Look at my screen share. Um, we have an assembly language now. <laughs> you <laughs> made a sim. I actually made like an interpreter for it that loads it into memory. Yeah, okay. It, I guess if we make it like that, it would not be too bad. Especially so, like the, the more basic... anything, it's very fragile right now. But like yeah, yeah, but like yeah, uh, would it be okay for you uh, to send like your code to me, and then we can actually work on it uh, in the stream? Like not not yet because I'm still working on. Uh, yeah, the I can't really do that right now because it's depending on my implementation of it, which is like slightly different. It, your implementation of what? Uh, of the. Assembly thing you're doing. Like oh, I'm coding yeah, yeah. a lot at the start and I implemented things differently. Like my memory is a separate class with like Oh yeah yeah. So but like as long as you have to convert it, but it like But like your partial class would still work, right? Yeah, you well, you have to convert all of this like where it's calling memory and constructing it with the memory and stuff, but Yeah yeah, but that, that's alright. We, we, we can like we can work on we that. We can make here. this work. If you push the code to get all uh send a PR with yeah. the Oh okay, I see where the issue is. Uh, it's trying to work with stack now. We have how many registers? 0xc. 0xc, uh, that's 12 registers. Um, and we only have 11 things. So it is actually... Not oh, yeah, only... that's an issue. <laughs> yeah, not only that, but we have 13 registers because uh, this is 0x0. So it's 0 to 12, which is 13 registers. So that's why it's uh, er crashing. I was already freaking out. So... Ooh. Hmm. Oh, wait. Um, how do we pop? Because when we pop, we also need to... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so... Okay, I'm gonna have food pop... all day, so I'm gonna drop off now, but it was really fun, this thing. Okay, I'm glad okay, to hear it. And sure. uh, I'll see you around sometime. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so... Uh, basically, the, what I was doing wrong is um, I was first, like, usually you subtract it so that then um, it's on the, the first part of the next word, quote-unquote word. Uh, however, for our code, that is not, uh, yeah, for when, you, when you're popping, you cannot do that. You need to make sure that you're first uh, reading it because it's already at the start of the thing you want to read. And then you can only um, increment it to make sure it's no longer there. Uh, let me see if it works. So this should now theoretically just print one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think this is it. So if I now do a hex this. There we go. Okay, that's the stack. <laughs> you have a stack now. We have a stack. Woo! We have a stack. Uh, okay. I, that, that is stacking up to be some good shit. Mm hmm? You're stacking it up to be some good shit. <laughs> Funny. Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, we have the stack now. It uh, everything works with pushing and popping. However, um, I like how it always says you play Rune Light. Oh yeah, no. Well, like, he's always playing it. Yeah, I've I've got like a gargoyle alt going on right now. I've got uh, uh I'm making blood runes on my main account. So uh, <laughs> what even? Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing like I'm streaming. I'm recording it. I'm playing two accounts of RuneCraft and I'm uh, of um, RuneCraft RuneScape, and I'm also coding. <laughs> Just know, building a casual computer while you play on your computer, you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. The next step is I'm gonna run RuneLight in bit now. No, yeah, I'm just wondering how fun. much memory do you happen to have in your system? Uh, which one? This 16. one or the other one? I have your your whole system. I have sixteen gigs here. And how much is in that system? Uh, this one? A little bit less. <laughs> the max go, 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 actually, I, actually, it has 0x, 7f, f, 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 d memory. Well, 0x, 7f, f, 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 d memory, that's not too bad. That should be a reasonable amount of memory. So this is the number, and then we convert that to uh, 2 to the power, uh, divided by 2 to the power of... Eight, so that is amount of bytes. That is so that's bytes. That is kilobyte. No wait, kilobyte um, is. Uh, that's not really how it works, since I'm pretty sure they are already like all longs. Oh no, they're all bytes. Yeah, they're all bytes. So this, so is, this is the amount of bytes. And how, how do we convert from bytes to megabytes? It's like well, divide by eight thousand twenty-four. 
Oh yeah, so like this. So if I divide by this number, it should be the amount of megabytes. If, if that's even yes. applicable. Yes. Okay. Oh wow, it's actually 200... Wait, do we actually two have... Gigs. Do we actually have two gigs? <laughs> yeah, we have two gigs! We have two gigs of memory! <laughs> You you made a thirty two well no wait thirty two bit gets up to four gigs right yeah okay that uh, makes yeah sense. it's an uns so it's a signed thirty two bit computer <laughs> we have yeah it memory. actually is since it's using a signed internet index yeah if you what just change like? your index actually... into a non signed uh, into an no, unsigned you int you would have a thirty two bit computer running uh, you can't yeah we can't but. Because Java. Yeah, Java. Oh. Wow. But that, that's really cool. Actually, that's actually we, well, 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 well could, couldn't. Is yeah. it not possible to make it into a 33 bit and then. Uh... <laughs> no. 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 No, 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 no. What we could do is we could make a custom uh, array uh, data structure. <laughs> yeah, yeah let's, let's just make our own primitive type. <laughs> With... oh, an array is not a primitive type. <laughs> Why not? Arrays aren't a primitive type in Java. Yeah, that's true. Okay, actually, let me... We can actually me, make our own implementation of it. Uh, so I'm gonna... I, I told you guys I would make my own call function. So I'm actually gonna make uh, a call sub... Uh, or uh, my own... Yeah, my own call function. I'm gonna make a little subroutine. Or, yeah, subroutine in this case function. That would public void uh, push. And that pushes a long uh, literal. And that's just gonna do this. So it's basically gonna... Decrease the thing, and it's gonna put, uh, write the literal there. So now I can just say over here, I can say um, push lit, and it seems like relatively pointless. Um, wait, give me a sec. So it's, it's, it seems relatively pointless, but we're going to be pushing and popping a bit inside of our instructions as well. That makes sense. Yeah, so we're going to have, and we're just going to have this. So then I can say, this is what we're going to be pushing here. So we're going to just push this and then remove this. Okay. But yeah, you're... Um, so then I can say, this is actually the return value of pop. Yeah, that makes sense, and then I need to implement pop. Wait, is your is your stack even eight aligned, or is it just completely unaligned? Oh, no, no, it's four aligned. Okay, four aligned. Okay, that's yeah, because, reasonable, I guess. Yeah, because um, in, in a 64-bit computer, you would standardly align it by eight, eight bytes, but because it's weird, you have to align it by 16 bytes. However, for us, we're just going uh, to align it on the literals themselves, which makes a ton of sense. Uh, public reasonable yeah long pop which will take zero arguments and it will call fetch 32 on the register before say so let's say long return value equals to that and then we're gonna uh, return return value okay so now we got a, a built-in pop and push method which is really really neat so yeah, we'll, we'll just say the register that we fetch is pop. So now let's see if it still works. Quite a, quite a, quite, quite useful. Yeah, that still works. I recognize that number by now. <laughs> what now? <laughs> uh, okay, that's uh, that's good. So, uh, my girlfriend's messaging me. I'm like, no, I'm still busy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, making no. a computer in Java. Go, go attend your girlfriend instead. Just, just saying. And this is why programmers never have a girlfriend. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. like uh, uh, my, uh, my, my girlfriend is actually on an internship right now, so I told her like, yeah, when you're back in an hour, I'll stop the stream and I'll spend time with you. But like right now, I'll... yeah, 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 I will literally come over there and shut off your computer if you don't. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. I mean, <laughs> we can have like a li little, a uh, little. Uh, crossover episode where my girlfriend joins the stream, but... Well, well, we know oh. where you live. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. Like, if you just Google my name, you'll find out. <laughs> okay, so now we have this. Uh, next step is calling. 
And as we know, calling is literally nothing more than a glorified, uh, a glorified, uh, what's it called? Ah, get it called. Um, then a glorified, glorified jump. yeah, a glorified jump. Thank you. I was really confused why I couldn't get that there. So let me add uh, another thing for stack manipulation. Oh, ah, and that's gonna be called call literal. Yeah, you're, there's only gonna be literals for call. That makes sense. Because um, you always call to something either you define yourself or that is imported from somewhere else. So uh, on the call instruction, <laughs> ha lit, it's lit. Um, you could make it so you can call a memory address directly. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean that's what we're doing. Call literal is nothing more than a jump. So all it will do is regit. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, there, it makes no sense to do anything else on this. Uh, EIP equals reg, or uh, in this case, lit. But not only does it do that, um, before it changes this, it also pushes the return address. So that means... Yeah, which is EIP which currently. Is the current, the current uh, instruction pointer. So before we do this, I'll say... Uh, so first it fetches, that's good. So then the instruction pointer is pointing to the next instruction. So then I can say, okay, then we push this. Okay. Don't you want to first push all of the other registers to make them yeah, safe? Yeah, but first, um, first I'm just going to implement call and return, and then I'm going to make it like work so that ah, okay. all the things are saved. Uh, and then we'll have a return as well. Just because uh, I've been here all the time, can I just ask, what's the difference between your reg and your lit? What's the difference between those... Uh, the first are registered, second are literal. What's the literals? Uh, literals are longs. Like, it's just like a literal value that is built in into your program. Uh, so like... If you define something constant in your program, it's literal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a literal and a constant are synonymous. Okay, it's... Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So it's okay. just pushing a value. Yeah, exactly. So we have call literal and... Uh, return. And this should be 30. <laughs> so now, when we return, we will not do anything here because return is just a standalone statement. And uh, let's see, we pop. And we are, of course, depending on uh, on the stack being at the same, uh, the stack point being at the same place as what before. But the way you do that is by having a function prologue and an epilogue, but we'll get we'll get that when we get there. We uh, get of, there when we get there. Yeah. As for now, I can literally just do this. <laughs> uh, let me see. I'll, I'll ah. give this an intermediate value, so I'll say long uh, return address equals to pop. And then I can just say if return address. If, if nobody was watching me code, I would just say uh, this equals pop. But this makes it a little bit more readable. Fuck it, I'm gonna... I'm gonna start working on assignment 4 in the movie while, while I listen to you. Alright. And like, I, I'm 100% I'm sure that watching me do this will give you such a deeper understanding of assembly. It, it is, actually. It, it, does, it does give me a good interest, understanding of it. Yeah, and that's really cool. <laughs> Even though, like, I, I watched uh, somebody else do this, and I, I made this computer myself before I started, uh, before I started writing assembly, so that's why I was uh, so quick to pick it up. I think. Um, yeah, but seeing it done now is also like there. Are, there are some differences between like our assembly and uh, X A, uh, like A T T assembly, but still. Okay, I think this should be it. So now, if I make a function, for example, a... Oh yeah, that's great. So I will say... Um, uh, let's see, I will make mov a literal into register. I will move the literal for one. And at, at this point, I'm making a, uh, a little... A little, yeah, subroutine. So, yeah, this is actually a subroutine. So, I will make a subroutine at uh, 0x100, and I will move the value 
41 into uh, RDI, and then I'll call Puchar. Uh, registers, registers, dot RDI. Uh, other way around. Registers, registers, dot RDI. EDI. Um. Oh, yeah, no, that should just be. Okay. Uh, I've been coding for like six hours non stop. <laughs> Give me a break. Um. Okay, and then we call Puchar. This is like a recursive call because we're already inside of a subroutine. Haha. <laughs> Except for that this isn't an actual uh, call, it's just a, something that I call it call. And it's really confusing, and let's go. So, we'll call Puchar, and then we will return. So I can literally just say equals to uh, red. Okay. So now, if I say move, uh, yeah, I can say call literal, and this is call 0x100, it should not only call it, but it should also return properly, and it should remember where we were beforehand, because that's going to be on the stack that we implemented, and ah, okay. But not only that, if I were to call it multiple times, that shouldn't break anything either. So I could just be able to call... Okay, let, let's try it then. If I do this, and then this, and then this, we should see three A's appear on the screen. Eh? None that's call. Oh! Yeah, we... we okay. Haha! -ha. Um... <laughs> Yeah, sick. Okay. Subroutines, uh, or... Yeah, subroutines are working. Oh, that's really cool. Nice. Nice, okay. This is actually going, like, really quick now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, like, four steps away from having a completely functional uh, instruction set. We still need, like, some logical operations. But I think, actually, after logical operations and fixing this, that's it. Uh, yeah, then we need. Then we can just make an assembler. Yeah, which I have basically done at this point. Yeah, and we can just edit your code to make sure that we all understand how it works and how everything works yeah. in there. I can actually send you the code. Uh, um, the I'll stack. wait with that until I'm uh, I'm done with the uh, with everything with the stack, so that I don't yeah. start confusing things. Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. <laughs> I just had to listen to uh, salted caramel ice cream. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's see what we're, what we're going to implement. We're going to implement uh, popping all the registers. But we do need to be careful. Because if we pop, uh, pop and push <laughs> all the registers, then we're also going to uh, pop and push the instruction pointer and the stack pointer, and that is not going to be pretty. Nope. <laughs> That's not. <laughs> yeah. So I think what I'm actually going to do is during the call... I'm gonna, um, let's see. Uh, so here I should make some code to preserve registers. Then I push this. So then I should do. Then the code to re, uh, or how would I say this? Return registers to original, yeah, to original state. Would go there. So that would mean that if I now, say for example, uh, push uh, registers register dot r uh, e b x, and then here I pop that, then that should. Uh, and I can just copy this, equals that. Then this should just preserve EBX. I mean, then we might as well just copy-paste that a bunch. I, I could do it with a for loop, but I don't think that's worth it. Probably not. Since you would have to have cases for the few registers you don't want to save anyway. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't be really nice, so let's do it. Um, so... 
if we want to push all of our registers, we want to push register 0, 2. I guess actually we can then push uh, for I, uh, int i equals 0, i is less than uh, registers dot length. Is that a lot? You, you want to do that so that you can actually add more registers in the yeah, exactly. theory yeah. without oh, having to recode that. Exactly, yeah. like that. that's why I want to keep my program as centralized as possible. So, so that hmm? any one thing can be changed without the other things all having to be exactly. changed. Exactly, like that, that's, that's one of the downsides of this computer. Like if I wanted to change a register, like if I wanted to add an accumulator here, then everything would break. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, and I want to keep my computer modular and like as, as changeable as possible. Uh, so if I later make decisions to do stuff the other way, then I don't uh, run into an issue. Agreed, that's a very good idea. Yeah. Now I can say, let's see, the ones we don't want to push are uh, the base pointer, the stack pointer, and the instruction pointer. So that is uh, 6, 7, and C. So now I can say if... Can I actually do I in? Or then I, I guess I would do uh, 6, 7, C contains can I do that or do I first have to say like uh, oh you can't do that I see and yeah because Java has static sizes for their things <laughs> yeah uh, in like that three equals or uh, excluded equals uh, and then I'll create a 0x6, 0x7, 0xc. Why does this not work? Am I messing stuff up with my declaration again? Uh, ah, yeah, I am messing stuff up with my declaration again. Fun stuff. So we are looking at this instruction. So it should be int excluded tree. Then I can say excluded dot contains. Why is it still erroring? Unexpected token. Huh? Do I have to say like new int like this? Does this work? No, it's because you have that three int excluded. It shouldn't be there. But. Shouldn't it I just like... defined when you call new on it, you can't put values in like that. Oh, but then do I have like? I think. Uh, let me check something quickly. Um, initialize array with values. Yeah, I think it's like this. Uh, where did you send it? No, it doesn't work actually. I just checked. I see. Oh, wait. We can just say uh, int error, uh, excluded equals um, like this, right? Hey, it worked! Woo! Oh, nice. Yeah, that's sick. Um, why do, dot contain? Uh, maybe dot index of. Doesn't work either. Are bytes arrays or are arrays really that primitive? Yikes. Arrays don't have any functions, no. Oh my god. If i uh, is not 6 and i is not 7 and i is not 0xc. You, I think you can use arrays.in and then pass an array and like. Yeah, okay, that could work. But this is fine. <laughs> Oh yeah, I still have a session to sign off my code soon. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Gotta, gotta remember to attend it. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. did put an alarm, which just went off. It's like, oh yeah, that was a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I should nice. probably join that Jetsy call now. Yeah, well, good luck. Well, well you're still like 10 minutes away, and then oh, okay. PA still have to show up, but like... Mm. So this would mean that if I now remove this, and then I remove this... Then that would mean that this preserves everything that I want. And not only that, but if I do this, and then instead of this I say it's registers.length. And this is really important, we gotta pop the other way around. I is bigger than zero, I minus minus. 
and then we can say uh, red uh, registers. All right, there's already a mistake in my call literal instruction uh, during the preservation of the register. Can anyone spot it? Wait, let me actually look. I'm just setting up the... my webcam, aka phone, right now. What do you say was the problem we had? Uh, here. Um. Uh. You're going the wrong way. No, you're not here. Uh. It's not gonna take zero. Um. It's not gonna restore zero, I think. Oh, it is. Maybe not restoring, though. No, not restore. I thought that was the function we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, and, and this, this should start out at X, uh, I minus one. You're right. Yep. I, I was correct, but I was one off. But yeah, that, that's like the mistake here. Oh, this should be... And uh, now apparently your whole code messed up. <laughs> but the mistake here is that I'm pushing I... But I yeah, oh, yeah, that's register. smart. Register I. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was like, yeah. I was thinking, why the hell would he push I? That makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why. Yeah, well, I, I shouldn't. So I push all the registers, and then I push the instruction pointer. I could also push the instruction pointer here, but I can't be asked. And then I. Uh, that 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 is a hardworking individual. I see. Hmm. Can't be asked. <laughs> That it works. Okay. Um, now it should work, but the hard thing is how do we test it? Um, let me what, see. What is the value for escape? This still works. Uh, okay, what do we do inside of the uh, of the block? So inside of here we actually edit EDI. So if I move like one into EDI and then check if it's the same afterwards, then it should work. Then we should could check if it works. If I say move a literal into register, I say uh, one, two, uh, three, four, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight into um, register dot edi and then afterwards after all of these three i can actually print out uh edi so after it's done running i can say uh s out uh red my cpu dot registers registers dot rdi so uh edi so inside of our function, we actually set, or inside of our main function, I guess, we set uh, EDI to one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then outside of there, or like inside of the call, we set it to uh, four one. But then the restore should restore that. Um, and because we do with uh, pop the same amount of push. It should all work. So theoretically, it should print the three zero etc number afterwards three eight or after the three eight. Hey, fuck you, stack or uh, uh, argument preservation. Call these saved registers. We don't have that here. Um. Nice. Now this is assembly I like. Yeah. What's happening? Um. We made assembly better. Yeah. So basically, what we did. Is uh, well, I mean, you were still here when we when we implemented the uh, the calling. Yeah, I just didn't hear. <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm trying to do the ANSI stuff at the same time. So yeah, but basically, what what we did is we just tested if it worked and it worked. Nice. <laughs> that, that, that's always the preferred outcome. Yeah, I was genuinely surprised <laughs> because I spent like literally three days uh, debugging this in my own code. But I was following along with the other guy and I didn't know actual assembly like AT and T syntax assembly worked there. So I didn't have like a base pointer, but I had a frame pointer and stuff like that. Um, and of course we don't have the enter instruction yet, which we could also do. Let's make an enter instruction. Let's make an enter and a leave instruction. That should be really, really easy. Yeah, just save push base pointer. Yeah, just do like the two move instructions. 
Are we gonna also preserve space on the stack? Uh, what do you mean? Enter can preserve space on the stack if you give it arguments. Oh, yeah. Um, well, we could, but we literally control memory, so there's not really a reason to. We can also, we can literally just say, okay, start writing at this address, and we will know that the address will be there. Yeah, um, that, that's why that's why this won't sig fault. Yeah, and not only that, but we are not even gonna... Uh, like, usually you would have to set which type of prolog you want, and you're always working with enter something zero. We're not gonna do that, we just always have but, this one prolog, because I've never but, used anything else. Really, your program should also... Like, th there's a reason segfault hap like segfault is the thing that, ha that happens soon. Oh yeah, totally. Shouldn't, shouldn't you, in theory, implement that to prevent the bugs that will happen if that isn't? Uh, yes. Segfault mostly However, happens because of security features now. Yeah. Yeah, the, the thing Which with aren't here. <laughs> yeah, we... Security? Ha! <laughs> no, well, those are handled security? by the way that have a lower level than even... So... I mean... It, it should be a thing, but the thing is, for segmentation fault to have happen, you first gotta have segments. <laughs> yeah, which we don't even have. Yeah, like, the thing with seg fault is, like, for example, if you were... Uh, we can actually ca do something that will cause that would usually cause, cause seg fault, and we, we will see that it doesn't actually do that. It'll um, just go on willing, like, without issues. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's like kind of an issue, but also uh, I can't be asked to do that. We'll do that later. So let's let's start with enter. <laughs> and we will also have leave. How do I get this c the character escape in? T um, which well, the actually, escape uh, character? Uh, look, look at uh, look at my code here. This is the escape yeah. character you're gonna want. So X one B. It is like what hex one B. And then or opening, and also, then something in an M. And you, you can, can also, also use other escape, escape characters. Escape code zero, three, three. Yeah, you can also use that. However, what uh, what I did is I just did like I first put a dot byte one B, and then a dot F key Z, and then the rest of the thing. Because they're just placed behind each and other. And then space one M. Um. Hmm? And then yeah. Yeah. Then the opening bracket, no. and then a, a format character, and then an M or like. Actually, you gotta look a little bit more close to the, uh, like, setting the background color, setting the foreground color, that's like 535 and 530, or uh, 548 and 538. I think it's 30, yeah, 385 and 485. Yeah, just just look at that in the in the wiki, it will tell you everything. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Okay, sick. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, so when we enter, what do we do? Let, let, me, let me write it out real quick. So, enter says... Uh, push rbp uh, and mov rbp uh, rsp to rbp okay so now we... you optionally could subtract space on the stack yeah but we don't need that because we like we decide where the stack is, or, or where yeah where everything in memory is well if you uh, have an assembler that like sits in between that you don't anymore yeah that's true that's maybe a thing but then again, it's like two lines of code to add. Um, yeah, indeed. And like even so. even if not, then you can just use the subtract uh, from RFP yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just yeah. It, I could do it, but it's not really needed. For now. Might do it later, but. Yeah. yeah. So first, we're gonna push RBP. And uh, to push something, I can literally just say push. Um, registers register dot RBP or EBP. And then I can say registers registers dot ebp equals registers registers dot esp. Wow, well wow, that was surprisingly easy. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. So then there's actually enough like on our code in there that you can just call a few functions and you're done. Yeah, exactly. Like the fact that we have enough supporting code, like supporting functions, auxiliary functions, I guess, makes it so that we can like really easily do stuff like this. So the fact that this first... is all in one file scares me. <laughs> yeah, but the issue is like putting this in different files doesn't make sense because it's all part of the same CPU. Yeah, it makes it like it makes no sense. 
Yeah. It's like n convention oh. between quotes in Java to like not have your file exceed two to three hundred lines. Yeah, but the, the issue they is that there's, no, there's, no, there's nothing we can put in other lines in other files. Maybe like the main where we say just new CPU. That could be a thing. Yeah, you could actually split up all the cases into calling functions in different files. But yeah. yeah, but that I no. <laughs> that just I makes it more really annoying, annoying in my opinion. Hmm? That just makes it more annoying, in my opinion. Yeah, and like, I don't know. That's like I use different classes in different files when there should be different files. Yeah, However, but it, it makes all happens logical within the CPU, so it doesn't make sense for me. Okay, but anyway, now we now we all say uh, registers uh, registers EBP equal pop. So that should be enter and leave. So now not only should our subroutine now work. But now we should be able to say, uh, enter. And then we should be able to just push, a, uh, I don't know, go here, off to the put char. Uh, we can say, uh, push register and add the uh, EDI register. So now we will push the value of EDI to the thing. But because we leave before we return, that shouldn't mess up the stack at all. Because uh, we like close out our quote unquote subroutine. I think this should just work. Even though. I, I, hmm? I've realized that I, I keep making some silly mistakes here. Because I'm so used to doing. Um, to moving stuff with control X instead of control. Like instead of copying. That I accidentally just move stuff when I'm trying to copy. Yeah. I feel yeah, especially when uh, when working with like VI instead of Notepad or other stuff. Um, okay, so and now if we didn't have this, if we didn't have the leave and enter, that would mean oh, that would mean that the return instruction actually wouldn't understand where to go to, and it would try to go to this address. Which would usually sec fall, <laughs> but since we don't have a sec fall, <laughs> oh god, the the errors I'm getting right now with my thing not working how I think it should work. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's it's pretty okay. ridiculous. I think you should actually, yeah. Hey, errors. okay, so Maybe. it's we got an index out of bound exception. That's totally what I expected. So what it's doing is it's currently trying to go to, <laughs> I think it's trying to return to 0x41, and after that, there's like no more code except for this one. So oh! Run over the entire. Uh, yeah, so then it, then it prints this again three more times, and then it just goes on running until it eventually never stops. This is certainly an interesting mistake that's happening here. In your code? Yeah. What are you doing? Well, now I'm getting something along the lines of in between, like my uh, the, the you know the ASCII uh, art part of it is completely messing up, and then in between the text part, it's giving me a star in between each character. <laughs> a star in between each character. <laughs> then you're probably messing up somewhere with your format string. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, so if we. Oh, if we that's, uncomment that's this, why. found it. Okay, sick. My <laughs> CPU. If we uncomment this, uh, yeah, then it just works. Okay, so we have subroutines that push and pop everything. We have stack calls. Oh my! Whoa! What the fuck? I started this like four hours ago. No, no, five, five. No, 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 more. Because I already have a two-hour video, and this one is already three and a half hours. Good luck to anyone watching nice. this, by the way. If you're still here, uh, what? But also, wow. good job. Um, but yeah, that's like six hours of progress in total. Five and a half to six. But yeah, making your own computer from scratch in six and a half hours, including, like, in my opinion, better functionality than uh, AT&T. In some cases, that's that's quite impressive. However, there is something that we we are currently not uh, not doing properly, and that is imagine your function had a return value. Oh, REX is not being preserved, is it? Well, c 
currently it, it is being preserved, but we do not want to preserve it. Yeah, we want to not preserve RAX. Yeah, exactly. So RAX is zero, so I e is not equal to zero. And let me actually make this a little bit more readable so that... Uh, you kind of lost one of the and signs. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I, yeah. <laughs> binary and and the other and. Different yeah, things. Bad idea. Yeah, been there. Um, Haven't we all? Okay, so now it will pre it will preserve and pop everything except for EAX, which is good because that's what we want. This is this is one of the things where it's like not how I would want it because now if we change something here. Oh wait, actually, uh. Register dot eax or eax. Yeah, we don't want to pop that one. We don't want to pop uh, e or espp. We don't want to pop uh, e bp, and we don't want to pop the instruction pointer. That's better. Yeah, I was about to say this is actually a lot better. Okay, why do I not see the color? Uh, what are you testing in? I'm testing it in the deco in the Visual Studio Code. Does that not give you the colors? That could be. Uh, uh, colors? I don't think it does. Colors work everywhere or uh, work in Windows Subsystem. There are some things that do not work in Windows Subsystem, like blinking. Uh, so you have like if you want to test 4.2 properly, you have to use um, a VM. However, 4.1 will work within uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Oh yeah, about that, uh, Yoda. Yeah. Could well, I actually that's... screen share something that I find like really weird? Yeah, sure. Uh, actually, get the right shell. I hope I got the right shell. Uh, hey. If I go into my. Like, there's a blink character and a reset character, which makes this not blink. Yeah. What are you supposed to do with that? Um, are you currently busy with 4.1 or 4.2? So this is 4.2. Well, you're supposed to send the blink character. Well, I am, but it's getting reset immediately afterwards. Wait, I, don't, I don't even remember it resetting. Uh, like, which, I what are you doing? I don't know it's why it's reset. doing it, but it's doing it. What are you doing this in? Uh, it's Vim. Uh, well, this is in console, KDE's mm -hmm. uh, default terminal emulator, but I tested it in like four different ones. Um, my code only worked in uh, a VM, so I used an Ubuntu VM and that worked. That's the only way, because yeah, I don't get color to work. Yeah, your color okay. should work. Um, yeah, but maybe, blink maybe works. You, maybe it shouldn't reset, I think, because there's not even a reset. Uh, there's a reset there. character there. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. No, oh. no there is no reset character. There's a... Um... Blink character there. Yes, yeah, so there's a blink and then another which is a reset. Well, I, I think the reset a for blink is uh, be... behind the past. Because the entirety of past blinks. Yeah, yeah, so there's also a reset character here, but I don't get why. There's no there. reset character before past. No, there's not. I, I, that, that, I that's part of your code then. There's only one at the very end. Yeah, also, when you're like editing stuff, don't... Uh, like, you shouldn't also send the color back to zero. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just sending a uh, code. Yeah, the CGI it's code. It's getting reset because of the reset there. Ah, I see. I don't know why that's happening. I have, like, no clue what the fuck's going on there. I asked the TA and they were like, that should not happen. What the fuck? I don't yeah. see any issues either. I, I, I can look at your code afterwards, but not now. Yeah. Um. Okay, it's so uh, we currently have... Enter and leave, we have return, we have... Oh, what are we missing? I think I think that... Like, we could implement binary... Uh, like, binary and, binary or, stuff like that, XOR. Uh, shift right, a shift left might be useful. Yeah, those two oh, as yeah. well. Division. Um, let's see, all, all the binary things in my old program I used... Oh, wrong one. Are... Um, then, this yeah, shift, actually left shift, right one. shift, and or XOR not. Tim actually said a really good one. Division. Yeah, do it. Ooh. No. I don't think we have division yet. Yeah, hmm. It's not even That's on, a challenge one. 
No, it's it's not no. even challenging because you can just load it from the registers and do the division like you normally would in Java. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just yeah, but Java however, yeah. wait, we we are we are working with the standard of AT and T, so we could just do like the RDX RAX thing again. Then yeah. yeah, I was I was worried about like that, but then yeah, we could do that. So I'll just add two more uh, two more instructions called mo uh, div reg and div lit. But are, are you going to merge RDX and RAX together for the division? Because that's no. how it works in AT and T. No. It 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 is how it works in AT and T, and it's also how it works for the multiplication. Uh, but it it's not how it works in mine. Okay, understood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I cannot be asked to like turn it from a 32-bit integer to a bigger integer because yeah. not only that, but it, it wouldn't even be able to fit into a long. Yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> okay, so now we can take this one, or actually we can take both of these, and we can say uh, reg uh, and this is by like a or a division by literal, and this is division by register. Uh, when we're not working with doubles or floats, division is rounded down, right? I uh, think so, yes. Yeah, that that should be the case. Yeah, round and down. Okay, so in that case, I'll set this, and also this, where our EDX is set to EAX modulo, which is uh, the remainder. So, yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'll hop into homework with you. Okay. <laughs> Ah, he's uh, helping guys. You're, you're kind of overriding the AX uh, character. Ooh, so this yeah, has to be... reverse order. Yeah, that's better. Then it would work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Um... Okay, the vision's done. Uh, <laughs> I think. Uh, okay, so Should then let's do the, let's see, we have arithmetic here, let's let's add another category called uh, binary logic. No, it, it shouldn't actually be that hard, because shifting uh, left and right is basically... Oh yeah, yeah, everything, like, all the, all the binary logic and stuff, that's really easy, <laughs> because here yeah. you see, like, yeah, XOR reg reg is just get the registers, turn them into registers, uh, set it to XOR and uh, put the accumulator to there. However, we're just gonna put it to the second register. Okay, that's sick. Okay, uh, so we've got shift left, shift right. Uh, let me actually do that. Uh, uh, and or XOR. Yeah. And that's on. Uh, the give me a sec. Get shift left, register. Yeah, uh, yeah. Why not implement a by implication? Mm hmm. <laughs> Why not implement no. the by implication? <laughs> just eat. I mean, it's the by implication uh, is done. Xor. Yeah, yeah. It's or it's actually, by implication is ignore. Yeah, exactly. So then you can yeah. just say not xor this, and then you're done. Yeah, but you could also say like xor is uh, that or that a or b, and not a and b. Yeah, so that's hey, true. But ignore is faster. <laughs> fair, fair. Okay, so we have shift left. We have a shift, oh, shift right. We have a binary and or XOR. And, oh, and, and, or, or, XOR, XOR. Yeah, you should, you should show this to the professors of OOP and computer organization. Yeah, definitely. Just to impress them. Yeah, I could. I should send them an email with uh, with this. Okay, and a not is always going to be not with a register because you cannot not a literal. You can, but it's useless. Uh, so this is uh, 60, 61, oh, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68. Haha! <laughs> 60A. It's over to say 60A. <laughs> um, okay. So that's all there. And then we can just go... Uh, 
imp oh no, a bunch of equal signs. Implementation oh, implementation of binary logic. The fact that these are not the same size is going to trigger a bunch of people. It has triggered me a long time ago. But frankly, I don't care. Uh, hey, welcome back. Guys, can any of you guys hear uh, HL Marino? What? No. No, because I can't hear him either. I see him speaking, but I don't hear yeah, him. Yeah, I, I see that his thing is green, but I cannot hear him. I can't even see his thing go green. Weird. I can see him go green, but I don't know. Right. He's not serve me or anything. Oh, exactly. Okay, let me let me take some. I'm gonna make one like base case and then copy paste that over and over because like everything is gonna be really quite similar. So we'll have the um, what the first one shift left register by literal, uh, which will take a register and a literal. Woo! This is science, guys. Um, is fetch um, too? Build my other side. Uh, you're real with a computer science guy. <laughs> 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 okay, so we have a register and a literal, and in order to fix this, I think we can just do um, <laughs> long results equals to uh, registers. Oh, uh, registers reg shift left by literal. And I and guess it would make sense. Now? now I can yeah. hear you. Yes. Okay, good luck. Yeah. Oh my god. I almost fall from the chair. <laughs> okay, you can go to homework help. I'll be right back. I okay. have um, sign off. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. So now we uh, we can do this. However, this might create an issue if we don't do uh, this. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, or this should be binary end. Uh, I am thinking though, it makes sense for this to be a literal as in a 32-bit literal. However, shift left and shift right will never be more than uh, 32, like the 32 or maybe 64. Mm -hmm. And we can represent all of that in just a byte. Oh yeah, that's true. So I, I think it might be. Even though it says register literal, we're just gonna have like a smaller literal, I guess. Where we're just gonna have like this. Good idea. Yeah, then uh, I am afraid that maybe I'm gonna make that make some mistakes with that in the future, like when I'm busy building uh, programs with this. However, I doubt I will ever use uh, shift left or shift right. And if anyone else does, they can look at my code and see that why it's not working. Are you are you seriously thinking about using this as a computer? Oh, uh, no. No, no, no. Not at all. No. <laughs> but uh, I do want to make it as usable as possible. Of course. Okay, so this is shift left register by a literal. Oh, yeah. I. Mm, uh, oh. Registers reg equals to result. Um, and this is shift right a register by a register. But which, uh, hmm. So which register are we gonna be putting it in? Yeah, I guess in this case, uh, it would be like... Let me see. Yeah, it sh in, instead of register and literal, it should be literal to register because the destination is always at the end. Yeah. If the destination at the end, then it has to be like this. A literal into a register. But that doesn't make sense for shift left. Uh, why not? Uh, because then you have like shift left for into the register, but it should be... Huh. Okay, well, well you know what, I'll take it. Uh, so this should be literal register, and that means we gotta take the literal first, then the register, and then it should work. So now we'll have reg 1, reg 2, so we can say 
if we take the let's see the destination is the second one so sec yeah. take yeah that should be shift left by the first one and then uh, we can say register two which is the destination is result okay so this is shift left uh, this is shift right <laughs> Um, and I just need to change this R and this R. So that's two out of the ten things. Then we have the and the end, and then we'll just then change it into a binary and and a binary and. Then we'll take this, put it another time. Then we'll do it in or and then. Or we'll change this to a binary or to a binary or I guess we don't really need the masks here, but I'm gonna leave them there anyway. And then we'll have XOR uh, XOR and then we'll change this to the XOR character. Uh, can somebody check for me if this is the XOR character in Java? I think it is. I believe it is, yes. Thick. And we'll add a not one, which is a register register one, where I just take away the first register and I say result is not register one. Um, and I end that. And this might actually be necessary because not all of the bits in front of the thing might be zero, or m m all of the bits in front of the long will be zero. And if we just not that, then it will become a really really big number. So I can say now rec one is result, and this will be uh, not. Should you call it like not rec or? Nah, just not because you can only not a reg. Yeah, I guess. And uh, now these should all be purple. I uh, said. Yeah. Okay, that's no, not working. Whatever, it will realize they're being used eventually. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, that's uh, that's the com complete implementation of binary logic. Nice. So we did shift left, shift right, and or XOR or not. Shift left, shift right, and or XOR and not. All right. Next up, signed multiplication. Uh. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I was about yeah, to say I, I am I I I think I'm just straight up not gonna include ne negative numbers. <laughs> <laughs> like any language should. Uh, I might do it, but then I might do it later. I only have like 12 minutes left until I gotta go anyways. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. Yeah, we can just... Uh, I'm having a out. bit of breakdown why my brain part program isn't working. <laughs> I haven't made it myself yet, so I cannot look at that, I'm sorry. So, would you no. say your brain is fucked? Ah, funny! Uh, uh. Okay, uh, guys, I think I might actually, um... Call of the day here. Aye, aye. And uh, I'm gonna upload this code to YouTube or to, uh, to YouTube to GitHub, and I'm gonna upload the recording to YouTube. And let's see. I'm gonna yeah. I'm just gonna uh, like upload the entire source library or source folder to GitHub, and I might actually send an email to the uh, to the uh, professors. Yeah, the professor, <laughs> like the CO and the RNL professors, or the CO and the RNL. OOP. No, just just send it to the RNL professors as well. <laughs> yeah. Like hey, I know you don't <laughs> do this shit, but it's really cool. Look at it. <laughs> that will be something. See, it, it has it has logic operations. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I I can do an end in this shit. So you know, you're you're practically doing RNL at this point. <laughs> no, all right, but I think yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, it's, it's been fun. Right. Yeah, uh, I will probably resume this tomorrow and then I'm gonna uh, start working on the uh, the assembler, I think. Yeah. But tomorrow I actually have my lab day. Or my uh, my mentor day. So I'm yeah. gonna... I'm probably gonna do that when I return from school, which is gonna be like at... I don't know, 2, 3 o'clock. All right. Hmm? I'll yeah. try it. I'll see if I can make it. Yeah, 
I'll I'll just see like if people have time at that point. I'll make a I'll make a poll beforehand in the uh, assembly chalkboard channel. Good idea. All right. All right. Well, uh, uh, thank you guys for joining me. It's been a blast. Like for real, this has been a lot of fun. And my uh, my understanding of, of, of both assembly and uh, Java itself has grown a lot bigger. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna end end the stream real quick, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.